Oh, baby, to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Shameless Daughters of Zion, Abortion. Tonight I'm going to be dealing with abortion this day because that's an endemic that has plagued our communities. We need to deal with it, okay? Shameless Daughters of Zion, Abortion. Okay, watch this. Let's open up with the book of Deuteronomy 27, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 1. Let's start there. Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 1. Read. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. What did he say? Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. That's the commandment right there. It says, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Keep all the commandments. Did he say some of the commandments? Read that part again. Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Jump down to verse 26. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. You know what? Read verse 10. Read verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day. You see, he's repeating himself again. You shall keep all the commandments of the Lord which I command thee this day. The statutes which I command thee this day. Now, what happens if we don't obey all the commandments of the Most High like God? Read verse 26. Come on. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. You see that thing? It says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. And that's exactly what we said. This Moses is talking to all Israel. He's talking to all the 12 tribes of Israel here. This is just when we came out of Egypt. We were in the wilderness during this time. It says what? Read that again, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Come on. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. Mm -hmm. And all the people shall say, Amen. We, said, we all said we agree. We all, we all said our mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, we all said, Amen. Meaning we agree to do all the words of this law. And if we don't, we agree to the law that we, we will accept the judgment that the Lord will bring upon us. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 11 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 1. Read that. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 1. Read. Read. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Read. Hear ye the words of this covenant and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The covenant is talk about the laws of God. That's the covenant. The covenant is God's laws. Hold this. Give me the book of Psalms in the Israel quick. The covenant is God's commandment. Okay. Psalm chapter 78, read verse 10. Read that. Psalm chapter 78, verse 10. Come on. They kept not the covenant of God mm -hmm. and refused to walk in his law. You see that thing? You see what the covenant is? The covenant is the laws of God. So go back. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 2 again. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, verse 2. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 2. Read. Hear ye the words of this covenant. And speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. You see that thing? It says, hear ye the words of this covenant. Meaning, hear ye the words of this law. The words of this law. Come on. And say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. That's the same thing we read in Deuteronomy 27, 26. It says, what? Cursed be what? Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. So when you look at our condition, you see that we see that what the Most High God was saying. Our condition is evident that the Most High God has brought forth judgment upon us because we said we're going to do the commandments. We broke all the laws of God. That's why now we live in the ghettos, in the castles. We are impoverished. We've got broken family structures. You understand? The black men and black women don't get along. You understand that? It's because we broke all the laws of God. That's why there's baby mamas, there's baby daddies, there's abortion, 
You understand? The killing of our sons and daughters. Read that again, verse 3. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 3. Come on. And say thou unto them, Thus mm -hmm. saith the Lord God of Israel, Read. Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Go ahead. Which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Read. From the iron furnace, saying, mm -hmm. Obey my voice and do them. According to all which I command you, so shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. You see that thing? When we obey the laws of God, we are his people. When we don't, guess what? Now we are at the mercy of our enemies that hate and despise us. That's why now they are ruling over us. Because as breaking God's commandments, the nations that hate us, they are the ones that are now ruling over us because of our sins. Basically, we brought this upon ourselves. Jump down to verse 6. Come on. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. The words of this covenant and do them. Meaning, hear ye the words of this law and do them. God gave us laws at the hand of Moses. Watch this. Give me Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. This is part of the Ten Commandments. Watch this. Exodus 20, verse 3. We're going to go into the law, one of some of those laws that we broke, which is the reason why there's abortion, there's adultery, there's murder. Read what you got. Come on. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the law right there. Read it again. That's the first commandment. Come on. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is the first law that the Most High God gave unto us. Because these are the laws that pertain to the heavenly Father. Hold this. Give me the book of Matthew 22. Matthew chapter 22. I'm going to show you something this day. Because in the Christian church, they like to read this verse, but they don't understand what it means. Give me Matthew 22. Okay. Matthew chapter 22. Read verse 36. Watch this. Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. Come on. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Read that again, verse 37. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Come on. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So, the laws that pertain to the Heavenly Father, we just read in Exodus 20, verse 3, the laws that pertain to the Most High God. How do you love the Most High God? Give me that in 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. Let's get that real quick. 1 John 5 and 3. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, with all thy soul, okay, and with all thy heart. Read that. 1 John 5 and 3. This is what it means to love the most High God. Read it. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Come on. For this is the love of God, mm -hmm. that we keep his commandments. Read. And his commandments are not grievous. So if you say you love God, but you're not keeping his commandments, you don't love the law. It's very plain and simple. Because many of our people, they love to say, no, I love God. Jesus is in my heart. But they don't do commandments one. They broke all the commandments of the Most High God. They don't love the law. Like for instance, today. Today is the Sabbath day. Our people are going to be buying. They are going to be cooking. They are going to be selling. They are going to be working. They don't love the law. Because why? Read that again, verse 3. Come on. First John chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God. Come on. That we keep his commandments. Right. And his commandments are not grievous. Because the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the law. The Sabbath day is the day that belongs to the heavenly Father. So when you break the Sabbath day, you hate the Father. You hate the Most High God. That's what the Most High God is telling us. That's what Christ was saying in Matthew, to the 22nd chapter. So go back to Matthew 22, read verse 37 again. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Come on. Jesus said unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Read. This is the first and great commandment. 
Now, this is the first and great command. These are laws that pertain to the Father. So go back to Exodus 20, verse 3. Let's get some specifics of what, what Christ meant when he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. Okay, read that. Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus of the 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So when you buy on the Sabbath, for instance, you sell, you cook, and all of that, you're worshipping another god because the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So when you break the Sabbath day, you are worshipping another god. That's idolatry. Okay? Read again verse 3 again. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. These are laws that pertain to the most High God. Jump down to verse 8 so I can just touch on the Sabbath because if we are on the Sabbath. The Sabbath has started already. It started at sundown. Read that verse 8. This is another example of how to love the most High God. Read it. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember Read. the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, which is today. Come on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. So from Friday, you understand? From, um, from, from Sunday to Friday, guess what? That's six days. From Sunday to Friday, you count in six days. Okay, go ahead. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day is the what now? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. We are on the seventh day now. Okay, come on. In it thou shalt do thou shalt not do any work. Mm -hmm. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So that means that, guess what? Your sons and your daughters, they must not be working. You understand? No cooking, none, none of that. He says, what? Your maidservant, you've got workers, you've got, a, you've got a maid, you've got a maidservant and all that, and men servant. He says, they must not be working on this day. Okay, come on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, mm -hmm. the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Come on. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. The Most High God, he blessed the Sabbath, the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the seventh day, which is today, has started already. Guess what? Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Guess what? You're not supposed to be buying, selling, and cooking, or again working, because it's the Lord's Sabbath day. When you break the Sabbath day, you guess what? You're worshiping another God. You break in the first commandment. That means you don't love the Lord your God. Jump up to verse 3 again. Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Read. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Idolatry. Don't worship any other god except the God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel. Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, Read. nor serve them. Mm -hmm. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So when you worship other gods, you hate the father. You worship another god, you hate the most like God. Understand that thing. So what I'm trying to show you is that abortion is rooted in idolatry. Abortion is rooted in idolatry because the root of abortion is what? Because guess what? For abortion to take place, because abortion is murder, what needs to take place first before that? Sex, fornication, adultery needs to be committed. And when you commit adultery, having sex outside of marriage, you're worshipping another God. Which God are you worshipping? I'm going to show you that. Watch this. Let me share my screen real quick so I can show you that. Which God you're worshipping when you're committing adultery? Because when you commit adultery, you're worshipping another God. Okay? Breaking the first commandment. Watch this. I want you to I want you to read this thing right here. Okay, read that. Reading reading from wikipedia.org. Mm -hmm. List of love and last deities. List of love and last deities. Meaning what? Other gods. I idols. Okay. List of love and last deities. Meaning idols that are worshipped that were created by men 
you understand, in honor of orgies, sexuality, sex outside of marriage, sexual immorality, and all of that. Now read that. A love deity is a deity in mythology associated with romance, sex, lust, or sexuality. All of these fall under sexual immorality. Come on. Love deities are common in mythology and may be found in many polytheistic religions. Polytheistic religions, okay. I want you to get the definition right there. Polytheistic, read that, polytheism. Polytheism is the belief in multiple deities. The, the belief in multiple deities, the belief in multiple multiple idols. You see, they are, they are showing you the, uh, the, the, the gods of Egypt right here. Look at that. You see that? You see the, the crocodile god holding the ankh? You see that? That's another god right there. You see it's naked. You see what they are showing right there? You see that? That's another one right there holding the ankh. Okay? So read that part again. Polytheism is the belief in multiple deities, which are usually assembled into a pantheon of gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. Along with their own religious sects and rituals. You see that thing? Along with their own religious sects and rituals. Okay? Now, read that. Female sex goddesses are often associated with beauty and other traditionally feminine attributes. You see that thing? That goes into feminism. So female sex goddesses are often associated with beauty and other traditionally feminine attributes. Even here today, the black men, you know, the black men that are sin. They like to say the black woman is God. Oh, you are, you are my queen. You are my goddess and all that. They are worshiping the woman, okay? And what are they worshiping? They are worshiping what's between her knees. Now watch this. We're gonna, I'm going to show you in different cultures and all that, the sex goddess was called in different names. You understand? Read that. West African Congo, the Central Africa. Read that. West African Congo. Mm -hmm. A fig. Mm -hmm. Come on. Ananza, goddess of the sea, allure and beauty. You see that thing? Goddess of the sea, allure and beauty. Okay, read that. Vodan, read. Vodan, Baron Lacroix, lower of the dead and sexuality. Lower, lower of the dead and sexuality. That's why when you read Proverbs 7, it tells you that a woman, an adulterous woman, the way of an adulterous woman, she's going to get you killed. Okay? Let's get to the next one. Yoruba. Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Oshan. Mm -hmm. Goddess of luxury and pleasure, sexuality and fertility, beauty and love, the river and fresh water. You see that thing? That goes back to Egypt, okay? Afro-Asiatic Middle East. Watch this. Canaanite. Canaanite. Mm -hmm. Astarte. Astarte. Astarte, that Ishtar, that Ashtoreth, the goddess of fertility, the queen of heaven. Go ahead. Goddess of sex and war. Mm -hmm. Canaanite version of Inanna. Canaanite version of Inanna. Okay, let's see. Egypt now. Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Bestet. Goddess of felines, love, protection, perfume, beauty, and dance. Uh -huh. Watch this. Go ahead. Bess. God of music, love, and dance. That's why certain type of music, it makes people to want to, want to have sex. What God are they worshipping? They are worshipping the goddess of what? The goddess of sex. Inanna, Astarte. They call them by different names, but it's all making reference to the same thing. Okay, come on. Hathor. Mm -hmm. Goddess of love, beauty, and music. Originally a sky goddess. Originally a sky goddess. Hathor. Okay, come on. Mean. Mm -hmm. God of reproduction, love, and sexual pleasure. You see that? This all goes into sexual immorality. Okay? Now, let's go to Mesopotamia. Read that. Mesopotamian, Inanna mm -hmm. or Easter. You see that? Inanna or Easter. Inanna or Easter. This goes back to Babylon. Read. Goddess of sex, love, beauty, wine, and war. Mm, you see that thing? That's why you mix wine and al alcohol and women. What happens? They have orgies. They have one night stands. They fall pregnant. What happens next? Abortion takes place. Okay, read. Nayana. 
goddess personifying voluptuousness, sexuality, and sensuality. You see that thing? It all goes back to what sexual immorality. I'm gonna jump down. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to Roman. Please enroll. Read that. Greco Roman. Greco Roman. Mm -hmm. Greek or Hellenic? Hellenic, meaning during the Hellenistic period. Read that. Hedon. Goddess of pleasure. Read that. Aphrodite. Watch this. Aphrodite. Goddess mm -hmm. of love, sex, and beauty. Greek version of Astarte and ultimately Inanna or Easter. You see that thing? They, they, so it's, it's all, it's, it goes back to the same demon. You understand? Semiramis, the mother of Nimrod, and also the wife of Nimrod. Because Nimrod married his own mother, they had sex, and Tammuz was born. Okay? The pagan Messiah. Now watch this. Read that. Roman. Roman. Mm -hmm. Voluptas. Voluptas. Roman. Go back to, to Volumptas. Read. Roman version of the Greek hedon. Now I want you to see something here. You see that Valentine thing? That Valentine garbage? Watch this. Cupid. 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 Mm. Go ahead. Roman version of the Greek eros, also called Amor. So it all goes back to what? It goes back to the goddess of sex and orgies and sexual immorality. So guess what? What I'm going, what I'm going to show you is when you see people performing sexual immorality involved in sex outside of marriage, they are worshipping this idol right here. They are worshipping Ishtar. They are worshipping Inanna. They are worshipping the queen of heaven. That's who they worship. Both men and especially the sister. Okay. Now, Exodus 20, read verse 5 again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So those that, that worship other gods, Inanna, Ishtar, Aphrodite, Aphrodite, you understand? They are all doing what they all hate the most like God. God is letting you know that they hate him. They hate and despise him because they, are what? they have other gods beside him. Read the verse, verse 3 again. So I want this verse to hit home. Okay, read it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Come on. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, read verse 8. We're going to start there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and verse 8. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 8. Come on. But that which is made with hands is cursed. You see that thing? But that which is made with hands is cursed. What is that? It's talking about these, these, uh, these, these, these idols because they are, they, are, they, are, they are those that God made with hand. You understand? You know what? Hold this. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31 because our forefather Moses, he warned us about this thing. He says, after he dies, we're going to utterly corrupt ourselves. And that's exactly what we did. You understand? Deuteronomy 31, read verse 27. Deuteronomy 31 verse 27. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 27. Come on. For I know thy rebellion mm -hmm. and thy stiff neck. So the Lord says we are rebellious and we are stiff neck. We are hard-headed with stubborn. Read. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. And how much more after my death? He says, while I'm alive with you now, you are, you are rebellious against the Lord. What's going to happen when I'm gone? What's going to happen when I go back to the Father? Jump down to verse 29. Read. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. You see that thing? He says, after my death, you will utterly, meaning completely, corrupt yourselves. Read. And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. And evil will befall you in the latter days. In the last days. We're going to go into slavery. And when we are in the lands of our captivity, we're going to worship other gods. Read. Right? Because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. You see what he's saying? He says, we're going to do evil in the sight of the Lord. We're going to provoke the Lord to anger through the work of our hands. So what, how, what did we do? What is the evil that we did 
to provoke the Lord to anger with the work of our hands. Give me that in Deuteronomy 32. I'm going to show you what we did as a nation. Deuteronomy 32 verse 15. Because when we had the kingdom, when everything was good, Israel does what it does best. They always want, they say to hell with the Lord, we forget the most high. Deuteronomy 32 verse 15. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15. Come on. But Jeshua works fed and kicked. We see that thing? We work fed doesn't mean we're walking around overweight, meaning we were well fed, we we're taken care of. We was well, we were in our kingdom during the time of King David and King Solomon. What did we do? Come on. Thou art works and fed, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him mm -hmm. and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. We forgot what the Lord did for us. We forgot what, the, what God did for us when he delivered us out of the land of Egypt, from captivity, from oppression, from slavery. You understand? Right? What did we do? Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. You see what we did with the work of our hands? We provoked the Lord to anger with the work of our hands. What did we do? Read that again, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16. Read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. We provoked the Lord to anger with strange gods. We went out of our way to provoke the Lord to anger with strange gods. Breaking which law? Breaking the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. With abominations provoked they him to anger. The, abomina the abominations is, is talking about these idols that we started to worship. Read. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Mm -hmm. To God whom they knew not. Come on. To new God that came newly up. Come whom on. your fathers feared not. You see that thing? That's how we provoke the Lord to anger. We provoke the Lord to anger with new gods that came newly up. Christianity, worshiping white Jesus, Islam, worshiping a black rock. That's what we did as a nation. You understand? And through those idols that we started to worship, Christianity, white Jesus, Guess what? It, oh, it was a gateway to God, to sin. Because now we are sinning, worshipping a white man, thinking that's Jesus, which is not. Thinking God is white, which is not. The angels are white, which they are not. You understand? So we started to go into these idolatrous practices, worshipping the gods of these other nations. You understand? Which opened doors to what? OG, sexual immorality, abortion. You see that thing? We started to do that, which is what we are doing today as a nation. Okay? So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 8 now. Go back there. So now we understand what Moses was talking about. Okay, read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 8. Read. But that which is made with hands is cursed. That which is made with hands is cursed. What is that? Worshipping of other gods. New gods that came newly up, which neither our fathers knew. Read. As well it, as he that made it. Mm-hmm. He, because he made it, and it, because being corruptible, it was called God. You see that thing? He says, the, he says, the God that was made with hands, which are cursed, he says, and the, the person that made the, that made the idol also, they also cursed, he says, because being corruptible, it was called God. Because these things are corruptible, you understand? They are not actually God. They are false God. They don't exist. They have no breath. But we started to bow down to those things. That's how low we fell as a nation. That's how low we have fallen today. Go ahead. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike, mm -hmm. hateful unto God. You see that part right there? It says the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike, hateful unto God. Because the ungodly, they worship other gods. Their ungodliness is to bow down to these gods. Guess what? They are hateful unto the Lord. That's what we read in Exodus 20 verse 5. That's the same thing. You understand? So the most like God, because in the Christian church, they say, no, God loves, he, he hates sin, but he loves the person doing the sin. That does, that's not in the Bible. That's not in the Holy Bible. Read that verse again. Verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 9. Come on. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike, hateful mm -hmm. unto God. So there's no such thing that God hates the sin but he loves the person doing the sin. No, 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 because the person that's doing the sin, he's the doer. So God hates you and the sin you're in. When you repent, the Lord will love you, you understand, and he loves the ways, the ways that he gave you for you to follow. Go ahead. 
for that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. So the God that you, the, the idol that you created and you, both of you are going to be destroyed, the Lord is saying. Come on. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. You see that thing? Upon the idols of the Gentiles, which Israel would begin to worship, you understand? Christianity, Islam, you understand? All these Christianity, Islam, what, uh, celebration of birthdays, uh, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, okay? New Year's Day, Christmas Day, all of them, that's all idolatry, paganism, okay? What does the Bible say? Read verse 11 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 11. Read. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. The most that God will pay them a visit will destroy them like we read in the text. Read. Because in the creature of God, they have become an abomination. In the creation, in God's creation, these idols have become an abomination. To who? To the Lord and to us. Read. And stumbling blocks to the souls of men. And a stumbling block to the souls of men. Men of Israel. Men and women of Israel, these idols have become a stumbling block. That's why our people, when we teach the law, they say, no, the laws of God are done away with. That's a stumbling block. Because why? You're worshipping idols. Right? And the snare to the feet of the unwise. And it will be a threat to the feet of the unwise. Because what gives you wisdom? Hold this. Give me Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what gives the wisdom to the black man and the black woman so that we don't become dumb in the sight of the Lord or in the sight of the nation. Psalms 19 verse 7. This is what gives us wisdom. Okay? Read it. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Read. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting mm -hmm. the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see what makes us wise? The laws of God. God's laws is what makes us wise. When you don't keep God's commandments, you are unwise, you are foolish, you're dumb. That's what the Lord is saying, okay? Because without keeping of God's commandments, you don't have common sense. Give me that in Nehemiah 8 verse 8 real quick. Without God's law gives you sense. When you don't obey and apply God's commandments, you have no sense, okay? Read that. Nehemiah 8 verse 8. Read that for me. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Come on. So they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense mm -hmm. and caused them to understand the reading. You see what gives, what, what gives you the sense? The laws of God. When we read out of the, the laws of God as it is written, you're going to receive sense. Guess what? Once you have sense, you'll have understanding. Lack of understanding means you have no sense because you're not keeping the laws of God. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Read verse 12 now. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Come on. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. You see that thing? The devising of idols, because remember, in verse 8, it says what? It says, but that which is made with hands is cursed, as well it, as he that made it. So the person that made the idol with hands, the person that made it, and the idol that he created, all of that, it was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Because spiritually now you are fornicating. You understand? With your spirit, you are fornicating. You celebrate Christmas. You celebrate New Year. You dress like a woman. You dress like a man as you dress like a man as a woman. That's spiritual fornication. Worshipping of another God. You understand? The God that we the, the goddess that our sisters are worshiping today is the goddess Inanna, the goddess of sex, orgies, sexual immorality. You understand? Read that again, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Right. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. So when these idols were invented, they corrupted what? They corrupt your life. They corrupt the way you think. They corrupt the way you dress. They corrupt the way you look at yourself. You understand? For instance, sisters that are lesbians, they're worshipping other gods. Which god are they worshipping? The gods of sex and sexual immorality, sexual justice and freedom. I think that's what they are pushing now, especially our sisters. I'm going to show you some videos you're going to see really how deep the rabbit hole goes. Keep going. Verse 13. Read. For neither were they from the beginning, uh -huh. neither shall they be forever. He says these idols were not from the beginning. Meaning what? When the Most High God created the heaven and earth, the sea and all of that, these idols were not there. You understand? Idolatry entered when what? 
when Eve decided, I'm not going to listen to my husband Adam, I'm going to listen to the devil. That's when, they, that's when idolatry entered in. But when the most I created things from the beginning, none of those things was there. Okay? Read. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. So the reason why you see idolatry today, you see worshipping of other gods as outside of the most high God is because of the vain glory of men. Meaning men wanted to glorify themselves. I'll give an example. Because guess what? The reason why you see sexual immorality amongst our sisters, they are, they are holding out themselves out in the community, having sex with everything that moves, whether it's a man or a woman, whether it's an older man or a younger man and all that. Guess what? All of that is vain glory because they think they are a goddess. They think when men want to sleep with them, that, that they've got some kind of power over men. So now they've, they've, they, now they've been taught to become a what? A goddess. Now they are worshipped. They are worshipped spiritually and physically because men bow down to you when they have sex with you. You see that thing? So it says, by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Now, so much so that when these our sisters are having sex with all these multiple men, they fall pregnant. Guess what? I don't want the baby. What do they do? They play God. They kill the baby. They make decisions between life and death because they say, that's my body. But what about the life of the, the child that is in your stomach? What about their life? You see that thing? Now they become the, a god to themselves. I hope you men and women understand this. Read that verse again, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 14. Come on. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Come on. And therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Because the most High God will destroy all these idols that our sisters are worshiping this day. Jump down to verse 22 now. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Come on. Moreover, this was not enough for them. Meaning this was not enough. So they took it a step further. It was not enough that the, the, these women that they've been worshipped is not enough. What did the Lord say? Read that part again. Moreover, this was not enough for them mm -hmm. that they erred in the knowledge of God. So there is not enough that they erred in the knowledge of God because now wanting yourself to be worshipped, you are in error when it comes to the knowledge of God. Because now you become a curse, you, you, you set yourself a stumbling block for yourself, you understand? Now your soul is what? Your soul is corrupt. Your mind is destroyed. Your thought process is no longer functioning. You have no sense. Okay, come on. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. You see that thing? He says it's not enough that they add in the knowledge of God. But they took it a step further that we want to live in the great war of ignorance. Meaning what? They don't care. They just ignore it. Meaning it doesn't mean anything. It's just a fetus. I guess that's what they say now, to justify themselves killing. So that it doesn't, they, they don't have to feel like, I'm actually killing. The government is giving you new terms. They say, no, it's not a baby. It's a fetus. So that when you kill the baby, it doesn't feel you're actually committing murder. But you are. Okay, come on. Those so great plagues called day peace. You see that thing? So the great war of ignorance, they call it peace. So they have peaceful, they are peaceful in ignorance. But are they really peaceful? They are not. Give me that in Romans 10 verse 3. The most of God has all the answers. We just have to hearken to the laws of God, humble down. Sisters, just humble down and do what this Bible says. It's a new day. We are about to get delivered. You must make sure that you obey what this Bible is saying. Read what you got. Romans 10 verse 3. Come on. Romans chapter 10 verse 3. Pray. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. That's the ignorance. They are ignorant of God's righteousness. Remember what King Solomon said. He says, moreover, this was not enough for them. They erred in the knowledge of God, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance. Ignorant, ignorant is a war. Because they say ignorance is bliss. I guess that's what the word, that's what the world says. The world says ignorance is bliss. So just, just be ignorant of it. What you don't know cannot kill you. If you don't know what's going on, you cannot die from that. But they are lying to you because it says it's a war. You being ignorant is a spiritual war. They are spiritually destroying you to destroy your own people, to kill your own sons and daughters. That's a war because you are ignoring the laws of God to follow after the lust of your flesh. Read the thing again, verse 3, because you just want men to bow down to you. 
men to do this to you, men to touch this of you, men to buy this for you, to worship you. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. Come on. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness mm -hmm. and going about to establish their own righteousness. You see what the problem is? They've, they've let go of the righteousness of God. Hold that. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6, 25. Let's see what it means. They've what? They've, they've, they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. What is the righteousness of God that they are ignorant of? Because King Solomon says that, that ignorance is called, it's a war. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. Let's get there. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Go ahead. And it shall be our righteousness mm -hmm. if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. You see what righteousness is? When you keep all the commandments of the Most High God. So go back to Romans 10, verse 3 again. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. Come on. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. They being ignorant and going, of, hold on. They being ignorant of God's laws. That's them being ignorant of God's righteousness. When you are ignorant of God's righteousness, you are ignorant of God's laws. Meaning what? To hell with what the Bible says. To hell with what the law says. I'm just going to do whatever it makes me feel good. Go ahead. And going about to establish their own righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Meaning this is my body, my choice. My body, my choice. I'm pro-choice and all that. That's them establishing their own righteousness. Playing God. I give their, their, their worship idols. They commit adult. Sexual immorality. You understand? They fall pregnant. They play God. They kill the baby. While they are committing adultery, they are being worshipped by men. Not only that, when they fall pregnant, guess what? They, because they are being worshipped by men, and they now believe that they are a god to themselves, when they fall pregnant, they also believe that I have a right to kill the baby. You see the, you see the domino effect? That's the domino effect. Go ahead. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They haven't submitted themselves to the laws of God. That's why it says, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 22. Come on. Moreover, this was not enough for them mm -hmm. that they erred in the knowledge of God. Come on. But whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. You see, ignorance is a plague. Ignorance is a plague of the mind because you are ignoring the common sense that God gives you through his laws. You go about to establish your own righteousness. What do you do? You kill the baby. You play God. When they say, no, sis, you cannot do that. You say, man, but the government says I can do it. It's my body. It's my choice. That's why it says, that great, that it says, those so great plagues call the peace. You see what the Bible is saying? Jump down. Read verse 27 now. Come on. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. For the worshipping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. You see that thing? The worshipping of idols not to be what? Not to be, not to be bowed down to, not to be served. For the worshipping of idols that are not supposed to be served is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. All the evil on this earth begins with idolatry. Every evil that you see on this earth, it doesn't matter what it is, it begins with idolatry, worshipping of other gods. Because those other gods, those other idols, they put a spirit on you. You understand? Then you find yourself just going, doing whatever the hell you want. That's another god. That's, another, that's how you worship that god. That's how you sacrifice unto that god. Because you do whatever, because each idol comes with rules and regulations on how to serve and worship it. You understand? The goddess of sex, what must you be doing? You must be Having sex with multiple partners, sleeping around, being a girlfriend and all that. Yes. That's how you serve and worship and put and what? And sacrifice unto it. When you kill your baby, you guess what? You sacrificing your child to that goddess of sex that you worship. Understand that thing. Okay, go ahead. Verse 28. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. For either they are mad when they be married. You see that thing? Is that for either, because either. They are mad when they be made. So King Solomon is saying, because I remember in verse 22 says, those so great plagues call they peace because you act it. You think everything is all good. There is no way that you can sleep around with multiple men and be okay as a sister. It's impossible. 
Because now you've got multiple DNAs of men in you. You're going to go crazy. You understand? Spiritually, you are messed up. Spiritually, you've got what? Spiritually, you've got, um, you, basically, you've got a spiritual debt. That's what you've got. You know this pick it up that goes into the community to come and collect garbage in the morning? Spiritually, that's what you've got. You are like that pick it up track. Spiritually, you stink. You understand? But guess what? You're going you're gonna to get drunk. You're going to go to party. You're going to do everything to make sure that you don't remember the stuff, the evils that you do. You understand that? Read that again, verse 28. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 28. Come on. For either they are mad when they be merry, mm -hmm. or prophesy lies. Is that they prophesy lies. I can remember now, many of these women, they sleep around, they perform orgies and all that. On Sunday, they go to church, they say, praise the Lord. They prophesy lies because they are lying to themselves and to the most high. Read. Or live unjustly. Because they live in the great war of ignorance. They went about to establish their own righteousness. They live unjustly, meaning they don't live according to the laws of God. They live according to the lust of their flesh. Whatever feels good, do it. That's what it means. Go ahead. Or else lightly forswear themselves. They forswear themselves. I love the Lord where they don't love. The most like God, they don't do nothing the Bible says. Okay, come on. For in so much as their trust is in idols, their trust is not in the law. People that worship idols, they don't trust the law. People that are having sex with multiple partners on being a girlfriend and all of that, guess what? You don't trust in the law, you trust in Inanna, you trust in Easter, Astarte, Aphrodite, you trust in that goddess of sex and sexual pleasure. Read that part again, verse 29. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 29. Read. Right? For in so much as their trust is in idols. For in so much as their trust is in idols. So they put so much of their trust in these idols that they worship. Go ahead. Which have, Which have no life. They have no life. They're not going to give you life. That means the Lord is telling you you are spiritually dead. You are a, you're like a walking zombie. Okay, go ahead. Though they swear falsely, they they because because you because you're gonna you gonna swear falsely. You're gonna say I love God because you go to church on Sunday. You understand? But during the week you play the whole in the community. On Sunday you go and praise the Lord. No 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 no. You worshiping Astarte when you go to church. You worshiping because that white Jesus he's an idol. So he gives you access to all these other idols that you can just say no come as you are. What it means is that come as you if you if you are a whore, you come as a whore, but you remain a whore. That's what it means. You come as, as a whore that commits abortion, sleeps around, you're gonna stay as a whore that sleeps around and commits abortion. That's what it means because they forswear, they swear falsely. Okay, read. Though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be heard. They don't expect that they're gonna be judged. They don't expect that they're going to get judged. You understand? Because when you correct them according to the laws of God, they're going to say, oh, don't judge me. Not my God. I know my Jesus. No, you're talking about white, that idol, that gay white man, that they say, no, that's Jesus. That's not Jesus. Okay? Keep reading. Verse 30. Come on. How, how be it? For both causes shall they be justly punished. The Lord says, for both causes, meaning you worship, you putting your trust in idols that have no life. You understand? Um, make, making yourself to be a goddess to be worshipped by these men that speak with you you understand making decisions to kill the baby because when you are a goddess I guess. the most high God says you're going to get punished for that you understand it's not going to go unpunished right both because they thought not well of God you don't think well of the Lord you don't think well of the Lord when you do that right giving heed unto idols because you give your mind to these idols that you worship that were made with hands that have no breath, right? And also unjustly swore in deceit, mm -hmm. despising holiness. The most that God says, you despise holiness. You despise the laws of God. That's what holiness is, God's commandment, okay? Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 16, verse 16. We're still dealing with idolatry. I'm going to show you the idolatry is the gateway to what? All these other sins, you understand? Particularly because we're dealing with abortion, Idolatry leads to abortion, which leads to murder. I'm going to show you that. 
We're dealing with abortion right now. Give me the Muslim 15 verse 15. I mean, we're dealing with idolatry, excuse me. We're dealing with idolatry right now. Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 15. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 15. Go ahead. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. Stop right there. What did they do? For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. They counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. They counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. Guess what? Remember what the Most High God said. Go back to Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus 20, verse 3. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the first commandment, right? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 15. I'm going to show you now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. They counted all the idols of the heathens to be gods. Remember, the heathens is the other nation, the original Gentiles. You understand? The heathens is the other nation. Give me that in Nehemiah 5 verse 9. Let's see who the heathens are. The most High God says we counted, meaning we acknowledged all the idols of these heathens to be gods. No longer do we acknowledge the Heavenly Father to be our God. He says we are now acknowledging the idols of these other nations to be our God. We watch God. Nehemiah 5 verse 9. Come on. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 9. Wait. Also I said, mm -hmm. it is not good that he do. Come on. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? The heathen, our what? The heathen, our enemies. The heathen, our enemies. The heathen, our enemies. So the heathen are our enemies. The other nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel. That goes into what? The white men, the Chinese men, the Arab men, you understand? The Canaanites, the Hamites, the Japanese and all that. Even our own people that hate the laws of God. They also part of our enemies. They are our enemies too. They are the enemies of the gospel. Understand that. So go back. They are heathen minded. That's why they are also called, they also fall under this category. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 15. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 15, verse 15. Come on. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. We acknowledged all the idols of the heathen, meaning our enemies, to be gods. Now, we worship in the gods of these other nations, meaning our enemies that enslaved us, that changed us, that renamed us, that took our book, our land, they changed everything about ourselves. Now, we worship in their idols. Land. That's how our people go to church on Sunday to worship the idols of these other nations and have taken them to be gods. You see that thing? Go ahead. Which neither have the use of eyes to see. You see that thing? Which neither have the use of eyes to see because these other, these idols, they have no eyes to see. They are just dumb idols, right? No nose is to throw breath. You see that? Because they cannot breathe. Because they're just dumb eyes. There's no breath in them, right? No ears to hear. No ears no fingers to hear. No fingers of hands to handle. You see that thing? No fingers of hands to handle. Keep going. Watch this. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. Because you have to pick them up. Now I'm going to show you something. Remember, these idols, they cannot walk. They cannot touch. They cannot smell. They cannot feel. They cannot hear. They cannot, they cannot see. So how do they, how are they able to do all these evils that are happening on this earth? Guess what? These, these dumb idols, they don't do nothing. But the people that are worshipping them, they are the ones that are multiplying people on the earth. So guess what? You become the eyes of that dumb idol. You become the ears of that dumb idol. You become the hands of that dumb idol. You become the hands of that dumb idol. So you do everything that they say this, uh, this thing is about to do. This thing is capable of doing. Like the black stone in Mecca. They believe that's Allah. So guess what? Our people worshipping Muhammad, you understand? Guess what? They believe that Allah, that black rock actually has life, but it doesn't. So, but they, are, they guess what? They, they represent that black rock because they go and do the things that are written regarding it on how to save it. You men and women understand that? Mm -hmm. Ah, all praises, sir. Yeah, that's all how praises, it works. Sir. That's, that's, how, that's how the evils are multiplying on this earth. You understand? Because you ever wonder, this thing is just a damn stone. People be wearing crosses on their necks. 
thinking, no, we are, we are remembering that our Lord and Savior. That's simple as hell. When your mother dies, maybe from cancer or from a car accident, you don't see the black man walking around with a car on his neck. You don't see that. But you see black men wearing a cross on their neck. That's not in the Bible for you to see and put it on your neck. That, that, the idol, the, the cross, is a symbol of oppression. That's how our Lord and Savior was mad at. You understand? So you don't walk around with that on your neck. That's dumb as hell. But now, in the name of that cross on your neck, you do all the evil. That thing that has no breath, has no legs, has no nothing, you're the one that actually doing the evil in the honor of that thing. You see how this works? Read that thing again, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 15. Go ahead. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods, mm -hmm. which neither have the use of eyes to see, nor noses to draw breath, Come nor on. ears to hear, nor fingers of hands to handle. And as for their feet, they are slow to go. You see that thing right there? Because you do that thing on his behalf. You understand? So the idols of these heathen, we took them to be gods. Now we have... As a, our people have embodied the, the rules, the tradition on how to worship these things. Now they've embodied those things. You understand? Watch this. Give me First Thessalonians 4 verse 3. Remember, we're still dealing with the gods of the, the idols of these, these other nations. Remember, the other nations have no god. They don't have a god. So as a part of throwing tantrums, as part of retaliation, as part of being angry like a child, they decided, you know what, we're going to create our own God that we're going to worship and we're going to believe that these idols, these dumb stones, these dumb uh, crosses that we have, they actually, actually have life. So that, that, that nation's actually throwing tantrums. That's really what you say. Allah is just a tantrum. Why Jesus is a tantrum? Buddha is a tantrum. You understand? Now read that. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3. Read what you got. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For this is the will of God, mm -hmm. even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Now, I'm going to show you something. Remember, we're dealing with idolatry. I'm going to show you the gateway to idolatry, which leads to what? Which leads to abortion. You understand? Which is murder. I'm going to show you the gateway. The gateway is worshiping of idols, breaking the first commandment, right? Watch this. Read that verse 3 again. I'm going to show you something. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For this is the will of God, mm -hmm. even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That you should what? That ye should abstain from fornication. That you should abstain from fornication. So it says, this is the will of God. What is the will of God? Give me Psalm 40, verse 8. Let's get what the will of God is, okay? The will of God. Read that. Psalm 40, verse 8. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is when you keep his commandments. So now go back to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. The will of God is when you keep his commandments. So to understand what the Apostle Paul is saying, he says, for this is the law of God. That's what the will of God is, the laws of God. For this is the law of God. Come on. Even your sanctification. Even, even meaning indeed your sanctification. The laws of God is what's going to sanctify. To sanctify means to cleanse you. Go ahead. That ye should abstain from fornication. That you should abstain from fornication. So the laws of God that teach you, that cleanses you and teaches you to abstain from fornication. Fornication is what? Sexual sin. To abstain from fornication. Hold this. Give me Exodus 20 verse 14. Let's read the law of God that teaches you to abstain from fornication. What law of God is that? You know Exodus. what? Hold on. Before you get there, remember. Give me Matthew 22 now. Read verse 38. Matthew 20, 30, Matthew 22. Read verse 39. Remember we read how to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, right? This is the first and great commandment. Let's see how to love your neighbor now. Watch this. Matthew 22, read verse 39. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. Come on. And the second is like unto it. Uh -huh. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Go ahead. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And on these two commandments, you love the Lord your God, meaning the laws that pertain to how to love the most like God. Then it says, the second is just like the first. It says, you must love your neighbor as yourself. It says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Meaning what? The, the Christ is dividing the Bible into two. Loving God and loving your neighbor. That's how Christ is dealing into two categories. Watch this. This is how you love your neighbor as yourself. Now, these are laws that pertain to your brother, your sister, right? Exodus 20, verse 14. Remember, it says, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. That law right there pertains to your neighbor. Let's see where, where that law is written. Exodus 20, verse 14. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Come on. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's the law that pertains to your neighbor. Because you don't commit adultery with the mother. You commit adultery with you against your neighbor. You understand? So for you to love your neighbor as yourself, you don't commit adultery. You don't, you don't commit fornication. You see now, worshipping of that other god, Inanna. When you sisters worship Inanna, you worship Astarte, Aphrodite. You understand? The goddess of sex and orgies and being a girlfriend. Guess what? It gives you a gateway to fornication. You see that thing? So now, idolatry leads to adultery. You see that thing? Idolatry, adultery. Watch this. Go back to 1 Thessalonians 4. Read verse 3 again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. For this is the will of God. Mm -hmm. Even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So the will of God that teaches you to abstain from fornication is Exodus 20, verse 14. You see that thing? The seventh commandment. The most that God is teaching us, listen, you must stop committing adultery. Because guess what? That's how you abstain from fornication. You apply that law in Exodus 20, verse 14. Read the next verse. Come on. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Is every one of you Israelites, now we're dealing with the sisters, sisters, is that you should know how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. Because your vessel it goes into your body, it also goes into what's between your knees. You understand? Is that you should know how to possess and take care of your body in sanctification and honor. How do you do that? You apply the law that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. You see that thing? So when you break the first commandment, which is worshiping of other gods, particularly the goddess of sex and sexual immorality, guess what? That's going to lead you to commit what? Adultery. You break the first commandment, you're going to break the seventh commandment that says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now you're becoming a girlfriend, you're having sex with multiple men and women. You understand? Go ahead. Because now that you know, you're not going to do this. Go ahead. Not in the last of concupiscence. You see that thing? So idolatry will lead you to what to commit adultery. You're going to go into the last of concupiscence. Read. Really? Even as the Gentiles which know not God. Read that part again. Read that part again. Even as the what? Even as the Gentiles which know not God. The Gentile goes into the other nations. The other nations don't know the heavenly father. That's why they are worshiping, they are worshiping idols that they made with hand. It says, even as the Gentiles which know not God. You see that thing? That go back to Wisdom of Solomon 15, verse 15, so I can show you how to connect the dots. It says, even as the Gentiles, meaning the heathens, which know not God. Because they don't know the God of Israel, they worship the God that they made with hands. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 15. Come on. For they counted all the idols of the heathen to be gods. Stop right there. They counted all the, God, the idols of the heathen to be gods, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So go back to 1 Thessalonians 4. Read verse 5 again. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Not in the last of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, because the other nations, they go after the last of concupiscence because they worship idols. 
So the idols they worship, they give them a gateway to perform what? Sexual immorality, to break the seventh commandment. That's why it says, even if the Gentiles wish no not God, because they worship their idols that they themselves created. Watch this. Give me, let's get the definition of concupiscence. Okay? Concupiscence. Read that. Because it's not a regular Negro way. We don't use this on a normal day, on a day-to-day -day basis. Read that. Concupiscence. The definition of concupiscence. Mm -hmm. Now, strong sexual desire. Yes. Must you see that thing? Strong sexual desire. Last. So the most high God says, don't have strong sexual desires, even as the Gentiles wish no, not God. Read verse 5 again, so we can replace the definition with, we can replace the word concupiscence with the definition here. Read that again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. Not in the last of strong sexual desire. You see that thing? Not in the last of strong sexual desires. Remember, the, mm, go back to Wisdom of Solomon. I'm going to show you something. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 29. Because it says what? Not in the last of strong sexual desires. Right? Why do you have a strong sexual desire? Evil sexual desires. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 29. Watch this. I'm going to show you where the spirit comes from. Read it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 29. Uh -huh. For in so much as their trust is in idols, which have no life. It says, for in, a, in so much as their trust is in idols, which have no life. So meaning you put all your trust in the, in the goddess of fertility, the goddess of sex and, and orgies and all that. You put all your trust in this idol. So much so that now the, the gateway to us to commit other, other, um, other sins, not you guess what? You also gonna you gonna go full in. You're gonna go all the way. You're gonna go, you're gonna, you, it's not it's not gonna be enough that you worship in this other God. No, no, no. You're gonna go further, you're gonna take it a step further, you're gonna do well. That's why he says, for in so much as their trust is in idols which have no life. Go ahead. Though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be heard. You see, they swear falsely. You put your soul in these idols that you worship. So much so, guess what? That idol, Inanna, will give you, it gives you a gateway to what? First Thessalonians 4 verse 5 again. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 5. Come on. Not in the last of concupiscence, Mm -hmm. even as the Gentiles which know not God. You see that thing? So because you put so much of your trust in these idols that were made with hands by these heathens, the, our enemies, these Gentiles, our enemies, the Lord says, you're going to go into the last of what? You're going to find yourself having strong sexual desires that are against the laws of God. Because what indeed, as the, just like the Gentiles, which know not God. They are the ones that are promoting homosexuality. They are the ones that are promoting abortion. They are the ones that are promoting wearing like a whore. The black woman is doing the same thing. They are the ones that are promoting what? Um, what is this? Bleaching of the skin. Um, cosmetic surgery. Where you're changing yourself into a woman or into a man. Whatever the case may be. Because why? Because that's what the heathens do. And because they worship idols, guess what? These idols that they worship, they have to go extra over extra to prove that these quote unquote gods exist, which they don't. So they have to put themselves through so much evil just to prove well, these gods exist, but they don't exist. You see that thing? So these, these idols, they actually teach you to destroy your own self. Understand that? Now, give me the book, give me the book of Psalms 96, verse 4. Okay, so sexual immorality is rooted in idolatry. Let me say that again. Sexual immorality is rooted in idolatry, breaking of the first commandment. So when you're performing sexual, you are in the midst of sexual immorality, you sisters flipping around, becoming lesbians, becoming girlfriends and being proud of it, guess what? You are worshiping other gods. And while you are in that sexual evil computer sense, guess what? 
you're going to sleep with multiple men, you're going to be a girlfriend because there's no difference between a girlfriend and a prostitute. You're all the same. It's just, you are the same thing. There's no difference. But the media make it seem like, no, these are different people. No, 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 no. A girlfriend and a prostitute that, that go, that men come to the place where they swing on the poles and all that, you are the same. You, there's no difference. Okay? Give me Psalms 96 verse 4. Read what you got. Psalms 96 verse 4. Read. For the Lord is great and mm -hmm. greatly to be praised. Come on. He is to be feared above all gods. You see that thing? It says the Lord is great and greatly to be feared. He is to be feared above all gods. Which gods? The gods is to, that's why it's a small g. I don't. Go ahead. For all the gods of the nations are idols. You see what the nations do? The nations worship idols. Nations worship idols. They worship these idols that they made with hands. You see, that's why even as the Gentiles which know not God, but they know these idols that they serve and worship, now they've taught us to do the same thing as a nation. Read again. Psalms chapter 96 verse 5. Come on. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Read. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. Buddha didn't make the heavens. Why Jesus didn't make the heavens? You understand? Allah didn't make the heavens. That black rock in Mecca. He didn't make the heavens Shalom, with sir. the earth. No, he didn't. You see that thing? Buddha didn't make the heavens. Understand that Aphrodite didn't make the heavens. Ishtar, Inanna, Ashtoreth did not make the heavens. The most said God of heaven and earth. The God of the 12 tribes of Israel. He made the heavens and he made, he made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Read it again. Okay, I need you to read that verse again. Read Psalms 96, verse 5. Okay. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 96, verse 5. Read. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Mm -hmm. But the Lord made the heavens. But the most high God of heaven and earth, the God of the twelve tribes of Israel, he made the heaven. Buddha didn't make the heaven. Why Jesus, you understand? Caesar Borgia, that gay white man that they say is Jesus, he didn't make the heaven. Buddha didn't make the heaven. Krishna did not make the heaven. Allah, that black rock in Mecca, did not make the heaven. The most high God of heaven and earth, he made the heaven. Understand that. Give me that in First Chronicles 16 verse 25. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 25. Watch this. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 25. Come on. For great is the Lord and great mm -hmm. is the praise. Come on. He also is to be feared above all gods. He also is to be feared above all gods. He's letting you know, fear the Lord. Don't put your trust in these idols that were made with hands that have no breath. You understand? Read. For all the gods of the people are idols. All the gods of the people. You see, in, in Psalms, he said all the gods of the nations, meaning Gentiles. You understand? Here yes, it says the people. He's making reference to the same people. The heathen. The heathen, people, Gentiles, it's all making reference to the same thing. Read again verse 26. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 26. Mm -hmm. For all the gods of the people are idols. Come on. But the Lord made the heavens. But the Lord made the heavens. So now, watch this. We dealt with idolatry. Idolatry is gateway to adultery. You understand? That's why you see sisters today, they are worshipped by men. They are complimented by men. The, in the media, you see the black woman is always taking her bum down. They don't show the black woman getting married or cooking or taking care of the children or teaching the children or cleaning the house. They always show the black woman half naked. They always show the black woman showing her breath, mini skirt, bum short, tight dress, no underwear, no bra. They always, that's, how, that's the image of the black woman. It's garbage. The most that God says, he says, use the laws of God to clean up your image. And that's why we hear the prophets are back. Understand that. Watch this. Give me Ezekiel 23 verse 37. I'm going to show you that idolatry is gateway to adultery. Read that. Ezekiel 23 verse 37. This is what our forefather Ezekiel said this day. Watch this. Read it. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 37. Come on. That they have committed adultery. They did what? They have committed adultery. That they committed adultery. Talk about our sisters now. They commit adultery. Go ahead. 
and blood is in their hands. So how can you commit adultery and you find yourself having blood on your hand? How did that happen? The Lord is going to tell you. Keep going. And with their idols, have they committed adultery? Stop right there. And with their idols, have they committed adultery? You see that thing? Because of idolatry, you're going to commit adultery. That's what the Lord is saying. Once you commit adultery, because you still want to play. I give you a go galavan. You still want to have sex some more. You still want to live your life. When you fall pregnant, guess what you're going to do to the baby? Keep going. And have also caused their sons, mm -hmm. whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. They'll talk, when it says to pass for them through the fire to devour them, it's talking about abortion. That's what the Bible says when it says to pass for them through the fire to devour them, meaning they kill the kids. They kill our sons and our daughters through abortion. That's what it means to pass for them through the fire. You see that thing right there? So idolatry leads to adultery, which leads to murder. You see this thing? So what law are they breaking? Give me Exodus. Thou shalt not kill. Read that for me. Exodus 20, verse... Give me the sixth commandment, okay? Exodus 20, verse 13. Read it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. Read it again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. So idolatry will lead you to commit adultery. That adultery will cause you to commit murder, which is what abortion is the dominant effect. It's idolatry, adultery, then murder. You see that? Go back to Ezekiel 23, verse 37 again. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. The day of committed adultery and blood is in their hands. Mm -hmm. And with their idols have they committed adultery and have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire to devour them. You see that thing? To pass for them through the fire to devour them. Watch this. Give me Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Read verse 4. You know what? Hmm. Start at verse 3. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 3. You know what? Hold on. Let's start at verse 1. Leviticus 20 verse 1. We're going to read down. I'm going to show you something this day. Watch this. Come on. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, Unto any of the seed unto who? That giveth any of his seed unto Molech, that giveth any of his seed to Molech, okay? That giveth any of his seed to Molech. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Bear with me a second. Okay? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to show you this day. I'm going to show you this thing. I'm going to show you what our bra our mothers and our mothers was doing during the time when we were, we, we were among the Canaanites. Okay? I'm going to show you what they were doing. Evil as hell. Read that verse again, verse 2. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, mm -hmm. he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. It says, any of our people that give their seed, meaning their children to Molech, Meaning they sacrifice their sons and their daughters to Molech. He says they shall surely be put to death. Now let's get the definition of Molech. Let's see who's Moloch. Moloch or Molech. Watch this. Now I want you to read this. Moloch or Molech. Watch this thing. Read it. Moloch. Reading mm -hmm. from wikipedia.org. Come on. Moloch. Ancient Greek. Moloch. Also Molech. Mm -hmm. Or Molech is a name or a term which appears in the Hebrew Bible several times. Come on. Primarily in the book of Leviticus. That's what we're reading now. Leviticus 20. Go ahead. The Bible strongly condemns practices which are associated with Moloch. The Bible strongly, it strongly condemns practices which are associated with Moloch. It's going to tell you what those practices are that the Bible is against. Read. 
practices which appear to have included child sacrifice. You see what Moloch is? Moloch is a god where our, our mothers, they would give birth, or not, they would give birth, and they, they will kill the kids. They will sacrifice their kids to Moloch. You see that thing? They sacrifice their children, their sons and their daughters. Keep reading. Traditionally, traditionally, Moloch has been understood as referring to, to a Canaanite god. You see that thing? Moloch has been what has been understood as referring to a Canaanite god. What did the Lord command us when we came out of Egypt? Leviticus 18, verse 1. I'm going to show well, this is what the most high God commanded us, but we didn't listen. Okay? Watch this. Read it. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Read. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Uh -huh. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, after the doings of the land of Canaan, after the doings of the land of Canaan, come on. Whither I bring you shall ye not mm. do. Rain. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Don't walk after the ordinances of the Egyptians or the ordinances of the people of the land of Canaan, which is the ancient Egyptians. The Lord says, don't walk after their ordinances. But what must we do? Next verse. Come on. Ye shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances mm -hmm. to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. You see that thing? That's the commandment right there. But what did Israel do? Israel did not. Israel did not listen. Okay. Now read that thing again, Moloch. Traditionally, read. Traditionally, Moloch has been understood as referring to a Canaanite god. Mm -hmm. However, since 1935, scholars have debated whether or not the term refers to a type of sacrifice on the basis of a similar term. They are just lying here. You go ahead. There's a, so now they want to debate this. No, it's written in the Bible before 1935. This is thousands of years ago. Read. Also spelled MLK, which means sacrifice. You see that thing? It means sacrifice in the Punic language. Okay? Now watch this. Hmm. I'm going to show you something. Okay? Read that. You know what? Oh, yes. Yeah. Read the second paragraph. <laughs> Read that. Watch this. Since the medieval period. The medieval period, that's when we ruled. We ruled Russia. We ruled England. We ruled Scotland. We ruled. That's when we ruled Europe for over a thousand years. So when it says medieval period, it's talking about the dark ages. Okay, come on. Since the medieval period, Moloch has often been portrayed as a bull-headed idol with outstretched hands over a fire. Mm -hmm. This depiction takes the brief mentions of Moloch in the Bible and combines them with various sources, including ancient accounts of Carthaginian, that modern-day Tunisia. Go ahead. Including ancient accounts of Carthaginian child sacrifice and the legend of the Minotaur. So now Carthaginian child sacrifices because we ruled Carthage, which is modern day Tunisia. We ruled, we ruled Carthage, okay? We ruled during that time. But this is during the Second Punic War and all that. This is AD, later on. But what I'm showing you is, guess what we was doing? We, we kept worshiping these, these gods that we, we worship in Egypt, sacrificing our sons and our daughters. You understand? Now read that. Moloch. Moloch has been figuratively used in reference to a person or a thing which demands or requires a very costly sacrifice. A very costly sacrifice, like what? Like children. Sacrificing of children. Okay? Now I'm going to show you something. Now, look at this image right here. This is one of, this is our mothers. You see what they are doing? Maybe let me just open this picture so we can see clear. I'm going to show you what our mothers are doing. Because, oh, there, there it is right there. I want you to see this picture. You see what's going on? This is our mothers and our fathers. What are they doing? Sacrificing their children to Molech. There's the fire right there. Sacrificing their... This, their abortions that the way they were done back then, the child was born and then they killed the child. They set the child on fire. Sacrificing them to Molech. That's why when you read Jeremiah 44, it says we did this without our we did this when our men were present. 
You see this thing? Now, Leviticus 20, read verse 2 again. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Right. And I will set my face against that man mm -hmm. and will cut him off from among, among his people because he has given of his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Because guess what? What happens today? Sisters commit abortion. The next day they go to church and say, praise the Lord. That's what we're reading. It says, to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Read on. Verse 4. Come on. And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from the man. You see that? It says, when the people of the land do in any wise hide their eyes from that man. Because today our people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to rebuke. They don't want to correct our sisters from committing abortion. Say abortion is murder. Instead, they enable them. They say, no, it's your body, it's your choice. No, that's evil. Okay, read. When he giveth of his seed unto Molech and kill him not. You see that thing? Because they, he's supposed to be put to death by life. But today we don't do that. The Lord is the one that does the killing. Read. Then I will set my face against that man and against his family. He says, I'm going to set my face against that man and his family. Listen to what the most High God is saying. The reason why you see our families are abject, they are messed up, is because the most High God has set his face against that house. Once you commit abortion in that guest, the most High God, I'm going to destroy that house if that house doesn't repent. If that household don't repent, the Lord, I'm going to destroy that house. Okay, come on. And I will cut him off. And all that go were hoarding after him mm -hmm. to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. You see that thing? That go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch, Molech from among their people. Because guess what? You, you, you commit idolatry leads to adultery, which leads to murder. You see how this works? The most I has it laid out in the Bible plainly. But our people, they don't want to stop, okay? They don't want to stop killing our sons and daughters. And the government is giving them kudos. That's why there's the termination, choice of termination of pregnancy. Hey, I'm going to deal with that in a second. Go back to Ezekiel 23, verse 37 again. Ezekiel, chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands. Really? And with their idols, have they committed adultery and have also caused their sons, whom they bear unto me, to pass for them through the fire to devour them. You see that thing? To kill them. To commit murder. Jump down to verse 39 now. Read. Verse 39. Mm -hmm. For when they had slain their children to their idols. Stop right there. When they have slain their children to their idols. Remember, they commit, idol they commit idolatry. Then they commit adultery. Then they murder. You see this thing? Read. Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. That's it right there. That's what we read in Leviticus 20. Is that they come into my, my sanctuary to profane it and to profane my holy name. That's what they are doing. That's what we read in it. We talk about the black Christian women. These black Christian women, they are the main ones that are committing abortion. And they are okay with the killing of our sons and daughters. They go to church every Sunday. They say, praise the Lord. But during the week, She's committing murder in the land, all over. She came up one two hours that day. On Sunday, then during she falls pregnant, guess what? She kills the baby. Sunday, she's the first one to kill again. No, Father, forgive me. Praise the Lord. Like nothing has happened. Read verse thirty nine again. Ezekiel chapter twenty three verse thirty nine. Come on. For when they had slain their children to their idols. Mm -hmm. Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. Go ahead. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of my house. And thus have they done in the midst of my house. And the reason why they are able to go to church after committing idolatry, adultery, and murder, they go back to the same idol, which is what? Give me 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. I'm going to show you the idol that they keep worshipping over and over because this idol that they worship every day on Sunday, 
is the idol that is giving them license to commit adultery. Is the same idol that is giving them license to commit murder, to kill our sons and our daughters through abortion. Watch this. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. I'm going to show you the idol they worship. The idol that gives them license to kill, to commit adultery, to commit idolatry. We watch God. Second Corinthians 11 verse 3. Read it. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Read. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Mm -hmm. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So now the Apostle Paul is going to explain to us who was the serpent that deceived our foremother Eve in the garden. He's going to tell you who, who, that, who that man was. It, wasn't a, it was not a snake. It was a man. He's going to tell you who that man is in the garden that deceived our foremother. Next verse. Verse 4. Come on. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Stop right there. So the serpent that deceived Eve in the garden is the, is the man that would come and preach another Jesus to us. Which man, which race of people on this earth taught another Jesus that is, uh, is not according to what the Bible says? The, white, the so-called white man. The so-called white man is the one that came and preached another Jesus to us. Caesar Bourget. A white Jesus with blue eyes and pink skin and yellow hair. Which man did that? The Caucasian race. Read the thing again, verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Come on. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, mm -hmm. whom we have not preached. Because the apostles, they never taught a white Jesus. They never taught a white man with blue eyes and pink skin and yellow hair as Jesus Christ. They never taught that. Read. Or if you receive another spirit. You receive another spirit. What spirit is this? Come as you are. You understand? You don't have to keep the laws of God. The laws of God are done away with. That's another spirit. Why this white Jesus with blue eyes and pink skin and yellow hair, he comes with another spirit. What spirit is that? The spirit of deception. The spirit of hating the laws of God. That's why our people today, they hate God's laws. But they go to church every Sunday. They hate the Bible, but they go to church every Sunday. That's the spirit that comes with white Jesus. You understand? Read. Really? Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received. Uh -huh. Or another gospel. Or another what? Or another gospel. Or another gospel. So this white man, this white image, bearing the Jesus Christ that they gave unto us, they deceived us. Guess what? It comes with another spirit. Not only that, but it comes with another gospel. Because you hear our people say, no, but it doesn't matter what color he is. All that matters is his message. No. The Bible is telling you here is this. This white Jesus will come with another spirit. Not only that, will come with another gospel. So you think the people that will give you Jesus, the so-called Jesus that is white, that is so-called white, they all, they're going to give you, they're going to teach you the right gospel. Are you kidding? They're going to give you a right spirit? No. It's letting you know that this white man that they say is Jesus will come with another spirit, will come with another gospel. What another gospel is there? Christ died for everyone. That's another gospel. That is not in the Bible. Jesus Christ, that black man, he did not die for everybody on this earth. He only died for the 12 tribes of Israel. So therefore, it comes with another gospel. Understand that. Read that verse again. I want this verse to marinate. Read the verse again, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Read. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, Mm -hmm. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. That's what we're doing right now. We're bearing with him with the scriptures. We fight him back with the laws of God that Jesus is not a white man. He's not a so-called white man. He's not. The gospel that Christ taught is not, he didn't come for everyone. It is not coming to deliver everyone. He didn't die for all men. You understand? And another spirit is that they say the laws of God are done away with. No, the laws of God are in effect. We must observe them. That's the reason why we are in slavery. When we keep God's commandment, we're going to come out of slavery. We're going to rule the nation. The reason why they teach that the laws of God, you don't have to keep them anymore. They want you to read, to, be, to stay a slave. They want you to remain at the bottom. They want you to suffer the judgment that the, that, is come, that, the, that Christ is bringing on this earth to all the nations. They want you to be part of that destruction. So they hate you in other ways. Watch this. Give me Revelation 16 verse 13. 
I'm going to show you another spirit. This other spirit that comes with this white man that they say is Jesus, I'm going to show you what type of spirit it is. Revelation 15 verse 13. Watch this. Revelation chapter 16 verse 13. Come on. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs mm -hmm. come out of the mouth of the dragon. Stop right there. These three unclean spirits like frogs. Remember frogs, these are unclean animals. It says, came out of the mouth of the dragon. The mouth of the dragon is talking about the mouth of this so-called white man. He uses the media because he's got the power of the media to deceive everyone. You understand? Comes out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon is a metaphor for the so-called white man. Read on. And out of the mouth of the beast. Mm -hmm. the, so he's still going into the dragon. The beast is going into the dragon again. Read. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. The false prophet is going into what? Is going into Christianity. Christianity is a false prophet. Christianity is a false prophet. Read on. For they are the spirits of devils. You see that thing? So Christianity is the spirit of devil. Read. Working miracles. Working miracles. What are the miracles? Because remember, when they bombed Japan, when they bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 during World War II, what did they say? They say what? They say, God bless America. That's what they say. That's the miracle. Read. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth mm -hmm. and of the whole world. You see that thing? The kings of the earth is talking about the presidents of the earth and the whole world because the whole world believes that Jesus is white. Read. To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The great day, the, the, the battle of the great day of the Almighty is the war of Armageddon. Jump down to the 16. Come on. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Armageddon, meaning what? Destruction, judgment, condemnation. When the nuclear bombs are going to hit this earth, when World War Three erupts on this earth, which is the judgment of the great day. Understand that? So Christianity is the spirit of devil. So this is why Jesus comes with what? Comes with the spirit of devil. You understand? Worshipping of idols. So every Sunday our sisters go to church because they are the main ones that go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday they are the ones that be putting makeup and pawns on and all that. That's already handbag and talk about I'm going to church. But the whole week she's a whole. You can't make this stuff up. But guess what? When they go to church, guess what they are taught? Come as you are. Stay as you are. Jesus loves you no matter what, which is not in the Bible. God does not love you no matter what. That is not in the Holy Bible. That's the doctrine of devils called Christianity. Now, give me First Timothy 4 verse 1. I'm still dealing with the false prophet for Christianity. Christianity is a false prophet. The spirit of devils. Okay? Read it. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits Read. and doctrines of devils. You see that thing? It says, in the last days, many, some of our people will depart from the faith, meaning the true teachings of Christ. And they're going to give heed to seducing spirits. Christianity is a seductive spirit. They seduce our people to be in sin. They teach our people to be okay being in the midst of sin. They say, Jesus loves you no matter what. Christ fulfilled the law. You don't have to keep the law. You can gracefully be a whore. You can gracefully commit abortion. You can gracefully sleep around. You can gracefully be a girlfriend because you are under grace. Guess what? That is seductive spirit and doctrine of devil. Christianity is a doctrine of devil. That's what the Bible is telling you. Read again this one. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And doctrine of devils. Come on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Stop right there. They speak lies in hypocrisy. You know what are the lies? The lies are, it's my body. I can do whatever I want. I can kill the baby. They speak lies in hypocrisy. Hold on. How did you, when you got the chance to actually kill the baby, but your mother didn't kill you, your mother could have committed abortion with you, then you wouldn't be alive. But your mother didn't do that. But when you think it's okay for you to kill the baby when you're 
for pregnant. But your mother didn't do that with you. You speak lies in hypocrisy. That's what the Lord is saying. It's the same thing with these lesbians. Lesbians, they say, no, that's the how I feel. But how, just hold on. Just, so sis, how did you come into this world? Because you didn't come into this world when your mother and another woman lay together. No, your father and mother lay together. You was born. Now you, you want to live this anti-lifestyle because lesbianism is anti-life. They are not pro-life. That's not a lifestyle. That's, a, that's an anti-life. Anti because the two of them cannot produce a baby. Two women laying together cannot conceive seed. You see that thing? Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Why? Because they are listening to TDJ. They are listening to Kepler Dollar. They are listening to Bushiri. They are listening to that snake called Mboro. They are listening to all these false pastors. Guess what? They are teaching them a seductive spirit called Christianity. That's why our sisters, a lot of them, when we meet them on the street, they don't want to humble down to do what the Bible is saying. They don't want to do it because they give them license to break the laws of God. Read verse 2 again. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Come on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, mm -hmm. having their conscience seared with the hot iron. Having their conscience seared with the hot iron. You ever see somebody ironing clothes and you forget the iron on the clothes and it leaves a stain? But most like God says their mind is like they've got a stain of an iron on them. Their conscience is like it's got a stain. You can't remove the stain. You can't convince them otherwise. They don't want to hear what the Bible says. In fact, Christianity teaches, especially our women, to hate the Bible. Yeah. Christianity teaches our sisters to hate the Bible. Because the minute you say, no, no, according to the Bible, it says you must dress like this. No, but that's just, be, just, that's, just that's during the Old Testament and all that. It is back then. Sister, God says that it doesn't change. So that's hatred right there. So Christianity teaches our women to hate the Bible. The minute you say, sis, change your dress code, Hamara, that's back then. You see, hatred, hatred of the Most High, God's laws, and hatred towards God. Haters of the Most High. They hate his son too. You see that thing? Now, watch this. Go back to Ezekiel 23. Read verse 39 again. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 39. Read. Right. For when they had slain their children to their idols, Mm -hmm. Then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. Come on. And lo, thus have they done in the midst of my house. They've, thus have they done in the midst of my house. Guess what? They're still committing abortion over and over. Yes, they keep going to church because the pastor teaches them it's okay. Jesus loves you no matter what. No matter how many children you kill. No matter how many sons and daughters. How many sons and daughters of the prophet do you kill? Jesus loves you no matter what which is not in the Holy Bible. You understand? So that's why they continue to kill our sons and our daughters. Give me Lamentations 4, verse 3. Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 3. Come on. Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. Mm -hmm. They give suck to their young ones. Really? The daughter of my people is become cruel. Like mm -hmm. the ostrich is in the wilderness. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, even the sea monster, they draw out the breath. They give suck to their young ones. A sea monster is a whale, a shark. A shark is a sea monster. A crocodile, that's a sea monster. God says they have enough sense to be well, to take care of their children. But, but, but the black woman is that the daughters of my people is become cruel. They are cruel against the one. It says they are cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. The most high God says the black woman is like an ostrich. You know what an ostrich, you see how, you know how an ostrich behaves? I'm going to show you. Give me that in Job. I'm going to show you how an ostrich behaves. The most high God says the black woman is like an ostrich. Watch this. Job 39 verse 13. Watch this thing right here. Job chapter 39 verse 13. Come on. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? Read verse 13 again. Job chapter 39, verse 13. Gavest thou the goodly Wait. wings unto the peacocks, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? 
So the Lord is the so Joe, our the job is asked you in the spirit of Christ. He says, Give thou the goodly wings unto the peacock, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich. So the subject matters about the peacock and the ostrich because they all fall under the same category. Go ahead. Which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in Come dust. Mm -hmm. And is forget the, the ostrich, they leave their eggs in the earth, meaning they lay eggs. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Verse 14 says, which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust. So the most that God says, the black woman is like an ostrich. They leave their eggs in the earth and warmeth them in the dust, right? Here's what happens next. Read. And forget it that the foot may crush them. Mm -hmm. Or that the wild beast may break them. You see that thing? So the most that God is saying is comparing the black woman to an ostrich. An ostrich will lay eggs and forget where the eggs are. And come later on and crush the eggs. And kill and destroy those eggs ever hatching. It says the black woman is like that with her kids. She's cruel against her children. That's why they, they are okay with killing them through abortion, which is murder. Read. She is hardened against her young ones. You see that part right there? She is hardened against her young ones, meaning she's cruel. That's what we read there. It says, but the daughters of my people is become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. It says she's hardened against her young ones. She don't give a damn about the kids. She don't give a damn about the child that is in her stomach. If she don't feel like it, she'll go to the abortion slaughterhouse and kill that baby. Read. As though they were not hers. Mm. Her labor is in vain without fear. You see that thing? It says she's going to crush his kids. It says she's hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. As though these are not her children. That's why they are, they are gladly can easily offer their kids to Molech. You understand? To sacrifice their kids to Molech through abortion. Just like they were doing it back then during the time of Egypt and throughout all the captivities that we've been under even unto this day. You understand? Read on. Because God had deprived her of wisdom, mm -hmm. neither had he imparted to her understanding. You see what the Bible is saying? The most that God says he, he deprived this type of woman of wisdom. He says, neither had he imparted to her understanding. It's not talking about all women, it says, but this type of women right here, that's what they do. They don't care about the kids. They don't care about their children. They are hardened against their young ones. That's why they can easily kill them and say, my body, my choice. You see that thing? And guess what? I've never seen black women going to the sea to toy toy against other black women that kill their sons and daughters through abortion. But I've seen many matches when they say no, you know, uh, they say what? They say femicide. I guess that's what they call it, femicide. They say no uh, domestic violence and all that. They say black men are abusing black women. Okay. Then the black women take to the sea. They do it all. Now my question is, how come the black women don't have the same energy when other black women, the many of the black women killing our sons and our daughters through abortion, I don't see black women taking to the seas about that. I don't see black women going to play toy about that. They're just quiet, like an ostrich in the wilderness. They bury their head in the sand while their bum is still out, as if nobody sees them. They play the three monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, say no evil. That's what they do. Hypocrisy. Watch this. Give me, give me the book. Hmm. Go back to Lamentations. Hmm. Watch this. Go back to Lamentations real quick. Okay. Abortion must fall here. Yeah. Abortion must fall. We want to use the laws of God to shut that wickedness down. Understand that. The sisters that don't want to humble down, you're going to die when the Lord returns. The most I will kill you with a nuclear missile. You have to spend some quality time with that missile because you've been going around just being rampant, killing our sons and daughters through abortion, thinking there's no judgment for it. There is a judgment for it if you don't repent. Repentance is open. But if you don't repent, you sleep around, worshipping idols, committing adultery and committing murder, the most I will not spare you on that day. Understand that. Lamentations 4 verse 3 again. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 3. Read. 
Even the sea monsters throw out the breast. Mm -hmm. They give suck to their young ones. Come on. The daughter of my people is become cruel, like the ostriches in the wilderness. I'm going to show you how cruel the daughters of Zion have become when it comes to their young ones. The next video you, is going to give you chills. Yeah? I want you to see this thing. This woman I'm going to show, I'm about to show you, is some kind of a doctor, 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 Kalen, something, something, Mr. Gay. She's an enabler. She's giving our sisters license to kill their kids. Because she's got such, she's got a PhD. She's a doctor. So she thinks now, yeah, now she's got some kind of a mouth to go around to speak to our sisters to commit abortion, right? Because it's always the black woman. You can always trust the black, especially these so-called educated ones, finally did multiple degrees. Those ones, they are the devil. I'm going to show you that. Watch this. This is love right here, okay? You will never get no type of love like that on this one. Hold on a second. Let me activate the sound. You know. It is a very, it is a very dire situation. He's been, he's, uh, uh, she's been uh, interviewed by another sin. This brother right here, this is a sin of note. Okay? Keep that in mind. It is a very dire situation, isn't it? And it's been a dire situation for many years and decades now. And, you know, clinicians like myself who work as abortion providers um, across the country. I want you to listen to what you just said, right? She mm -hmm. says she is an abortion provider. Could you imagine that? It's like he, she, her service is, is abortion. Just like somebody selling tomatoes, he says, no, my service is I sell tomatoes. Her business, her services is to provide abortion to the black young women to the black young women and older women in our community. This woman right here, she is the enemy of our people. I want two men and women to understand this thing. Her situation, isn't it? And it's been a dire situation for many years and decades now. And, you know, clinicians like myself who work as abortion providers um, across the country have been saying that there's a crisis for many years. And unfortunately, um, we not met um, with the necessary leadership um, that we would expect for such a problem. Who are you expecting this leadership from? Who are the, the people who are supposed to be leading the charge? Yeah, you see, the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act um, was passed in 1997, and that act gave conditions to who, where, when, and how uh, termination should happen. And the National Ministry of Health is the custodian of all health laws, and they should be giving and providing services as for the Constitution, as for the sexual rights and reproductive rights. And I think the choice um, to choose whether or not to continue the pregnancy um, remains a very crucial one for many, many women. And um, unfortunately, the health ministry fails women on many, many, many levels systematically. Um, you know, whether you are a young person requiring contraception, um, whether you are a young person who then falls pregnant for whatever reason, including contraception failure. If you are a young woman who then makes a choice, you know, to want to end a pregnancy, if you actually then, uh, you know, seek help and, and seek a facility that can help you, you are met with problems there. Um, often when you do find facilities, um, they're inaccessible in terms of literally physically, people have to drive and walk and, and take buses very far, and often the stock um, that you require the medical supplies are out of stock and never replenished. And in terms of healthcare provider training, um, it's lacking and the department has not taken an active role um, in the last decade um, at the very least to train professionals, postgraduate and undergraduate, to make sure that they offer ethical and um, you know, care that's up to standard. When you engage with the uh, authorities, what, what, what do they say? They don't even acknowledge your correspondence, unfortunately. Um, and that's the situation that we find ourselves, um, that you find that the leadership is apathetic. Um, they are clearly anti-choice and on record uh, being anti-choice. Mm. And I think the way that they practice medicine is still very paternalistic and really lacks the reproductive justice lens. That's you, 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 I hope you brothers are listening. She says the way in which medicine is practiced is clearly still very paternalistic. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. Is meaning what? She hates men. This woman right here, she hates men. So guess what? Hmm. I'm going to show you. You see, the mindset of this woman, I don't care whether she's a medical doctor, don't mean nothing to her. Because her degree is detrimental to our nation. She's using a degree to destroy, to kill our own sons and our daughters, especially the sons. I need you men to understand this. 
Okay. Required in terms of respecting people's autonomy um, and making sure that their health system is ready and able to assist anyone who requires any service for that matter. But you find that abortion care is often stigmatized and discriminated against. And I think in, in the context of South Africa and the global politics, we cannot ignore the fact that South Africa's health system and the programming that's designed and geared for women's health um, is funded by USAID and foreign funds, which often dictate the terms and how our health system is able to cater to women's needs. The global gag rule um, is now being expanded under the current U.S. President's administration. And I think it's in the uh, uncertainty that um, our health department continues to self-gag in a way. They don't support any work on advocacy that's related to abortion care. They do not support any NGOs for that matter um, in terms of training health providers. They remain inaccessible um, to all forms of communication and unfortunately do not respect the science that medicine is in terms of using the ev evidence base to make sure that policy inclusive, to make sure that policy translatable into accessible care and to making sure that if there are, for for example, healthcare providers who are obstructive, who are dishonorable, who are disobedient um, in, 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 in offering services to women, that those people, um, you know, there's recourse for those types of patients and those healthcare providers, frankly, have no place in medicine if you go into place morality or theology over your patient's needs. Mm, mm. You hear what, is, what she's saying? She's saying to hell with the Bible, to hell with the, what God says, that thou shalt not kill. It says, listen, you cannot place morality over what? Over the health care of your patient. This woman right here, guess what? This woman is the face of white supremacy. Let me say that again in case I started. This woman right here, she is the advocate, the face, you understand, of white supremacy. She is okay with the killing of her sons and daughters, just like the white man was doing when he came over here, killing, hanging, raping, and murdering our sons and daughters and mothers and fathers. She's doing the same thing in her community, in our community. I hope you sisters understand it, okay? So it's not just a resource or training issue, there's old attitudes. Attitudes. You hear what he, this thing, listen to what the thing is saying. Oh, they make me sick to my stomach. Brother, we have a lot of work to do. Sisters as well. You sisters that are in the congregation, you have a lot of work to do too. I hope you understand what's going on. In medicine, if you go into place morality or theology over your patient's needs. So it's not just a resource or training issue. There's old attitude. You see what he's saying? There's old sure. attitude, meaning what? Those men that are still holding, to, holding on to traditional, you understand, meaning what? Killing is not an option. Abortion, we don't believe in that because it's against the laws of God. He's saying that's, that's an old attitude. This is a simp right here. You see what you're looking at? This is a simp. This is not a man. He's a boy. And he's going to die if he doesn't respect that is coming out of his mouth. That's the reason why we have no leaders in our community, because we're looking at dumb Negroes like this. Oh, my God, they make me sick. Attitude remains a big uh, it remains a big problem, and societal attitudes in general, um, because a lot of the stigma, a lot of women are already self-judging and self-loathing because again they think they're doing something wrong. Oh my God, you can't make this stuff up. You hear what she's saying? She's saying these women that want to commit abortion, it says they make them feel like they're doing something wrong. Yes, you are doing something wrong. You're killing. Give me that in Exodus 20. Read Exodus 20 verse 18 again. Man, they make me sick. They are what's wrong with our community. They are the reason why there's so much abortion and killing in our community because they are enablers. They are not helping the situation. They are making it worse. And you know what they are, who they are supporting? They are supporting the so-called white man, Iso Edom Idumia, who his job is to kill our sons and daughters. They are in complete support of him. Read that thing for me. Exodus 20, verse 13. Read it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. That's the laws of God right there. God says don't kill. This woman is saying, them feeling, them hate, they, he says, these women, they hate themselves. They self-loathe, you understand? Because they think that what they feel with what they are doing is wrong, and it's wrong. No, what they are doing is wrong. It's murder. 
You see these degrees that these women are getting? These degrees, they are, they are, these women are getting, they are getting these degrees, not for the benefit of their nation. No, no, no. To support white supremacy. So they are the enemies of our community. They are our enemies. Understand that. And I'm going to show you that in the scriptures. Okay? Read the verse again, verse 13. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. It's very clear. It's clear cut. It's simple. straight forward. There is a big problem and societal attitudes in general um, because a lot of the stigma uh, a lot of women are already self-judging and self-loathing because again they think they're doing something wrong there is absolutely no public health campaign um, that's designed to help women know what the law is that abortion is in fact legal in south africa you see that thing so she believed that's why she keep referencing the choice on termination of pregnancy act because that's what she's leaning on she's leaning on that thing so every argument she's making is sitting on the basis of the choice on termination of pregnancy act. Okay? Where to seek help and what to do when things go wrong. You know, the health ministry took out radio ads and print advertisements where the minister talks about every eight minutes a woman dies on, of an unsafe abortion in South Africa. They can't tell you where they found those statistics and they have no plan to remedy that situation. So unfortunately, as we've seen with Life is a Dimeni, you have people who are in power who have the authority um, to be able to offer services and, and give dignified care and they don't do that. They fail on a systemic level continuously. And unfortunately, on this issue of abortion, the minister can't say he didn't know. He took out print and radio ads admitting to that statistic. And yet there's no, um, you know, there's no action, there's no plan, and there's absolutely no leadership. Hmm. Now, I'm gonna let, I'm, we're going to dig into this thing. We're going to dig into this thing. Okay, this woman is a doctor. Look how fat she is. She doesn't even know have the... This degree does not, did not even teach her that, listen, sister, you need to exercise and eat healthy. Man, you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. Now, I'm going to show you something. Let's deal with the choice on termination of pregnancy act. The thing that she just referenced. I know I'm hitting below the belt. Let's get the, the give me the right. Let me be justified with what I'm saying. Give me the right page real quick. Yeah, the sister needs to exercise. It's in the Bible. Give me that in the right page. The right chapter 30 and verse, read verse 15. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, verse 15. Come on. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Mm -hmm. And a strong body above infinite wealth. You see that thing? Health. The health, the, she keeps talking about health, 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 but she cannot see her own shortcomings. She doesn't realize that her degree did not teach her that, sister, you need to eat healthy, you need to exercise, you need to lose the fat, you need to burn the fat. She, didn't sh she should be teaching about that. But what she's teaching is that she's teaching young girls to kill the kids. She's teaching our sisters to kill the babies. But she's not teaching herself with that degree to lose weight and eat healthy and exercise. Are you kidding? Read that verse again, verse 15. Ecclesiasticus, the 30 verse 15. Mm -hmm. Health and good estate of body are above all cold. Right. And a strong body above infinite wealth. A strong body above infinite wealth. Jump down to verse 23. Because these type of women, they hate themselves. That's why they are so easily can kill their own sons and daughters through abortion. She says she's an abortion provider. What is she telling us? She's telling, that, she's telling us that she's a killer. She provides services to kill her own sons and daughters through abortion. Now read verse 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, verse 23. Ray. Love thine own soul. She doesn't love her own soul. Hold on. She doesn't love her own soul. Look how obese she is. She's a medical doctor, but she's obese. She's overweight. But she's busy. She's busy advocating for the killing of her sons and daughters. Read that verse again from verse 23. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, verse 23. Ray. Love thine own soul. Mm -hmm. and comfort thy heart. Come on. Remove sorrow far from thee. For sorrow has killed many, and there is no profit therein. Because stress has killed many, and there is no profit therein. That sister must lose the fat. 
She must lose the weight. She must bend the fat. She's got a medical degree. Shouldn't you know that she's not supposed to be that obese? Hmm? Read verse 25 now. Watch this. Verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. The most that God is telling you says, a cheerful and a good heart. That sister don't have a good heart. It says, will have a, a care of his meat and diet. She does not have a care of her meat and diet. That's why she's overweight. With a medical degree. Hmm? She's, her focus is wrong. She's focusing on the wrong stuff. She's supposed to be focusing on being healthy and exercising and eating right small portions. But because self-loathing, self-hatred, that's the reason why she's overweight. Yeah, I'm going to get on the sister. I hope she watches this video so she can repent and stop advocating for the killing of her sons and daughters. This makes me mad. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 verse 7. Okay? Of course I'm angry. The hell is this? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Read. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. That's why I'm mad right now. Because oppression maketh a wise man mad. We are so mad. That's why we're bringing these scriptures out. That's why we're bringing the medicine to our people that's so needy. Our sisters, they need the laws of God. They don't need women like Dr. Kaleng Mufugeng to go out there and advocate for the killing of their sons and daughters. That's madness. Okay, read. And a gift destroys the heart. And the gift that she's given to destroy the minds of our young daughters and our sisters is what? Is to kill their kids. That's the gift she's giving. Who is she advocating for? Guess what? She is the face of white supremacy. That black woman right there, she is the face of white supremacy. Now, let's dig into this. Because she, the, everything that she's saying is sitting, is rooted on the choice on termination of Pregnancy Act. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with that thing, okay? Let me share my screen. Hold on a second. Now read that. Abortion in South Africa. Read that for me. Abortion in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Reading from wikipedia.org. Come on. Abortion in South Africa is legal on request during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. The 12 weeks is going into three months. So the first, excuse me, the first 12 weeks of pregnancy is, is, is available on request. Read on. And under certain conditions afterwards. Meaning after 12 weeks. Read. Abortion is provided free at government hospitals and a telemedical or pills by post service is provided by Mary Stoke, South Africa. Mary Stowe is an abortion provider, just like that woman. That woman also, she's an abortion provider. I'm going to show you the organization that she stands for. Because I went to, I researched this thing. Keep going. And abortion clinic, Johannesburg. Abortion was legal only under very limited circumstances until 1st February 1997. Mm -hmm. When the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act Act 92 of 1996 came into force, providing abortion on demand for a variety of cases. So abortion on demand. When it says something is on demand, that means there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of supply for this demand. Meaning black women are going to be conditioned by women like this to say it's okay to kill your kid. So everything, every argument she made is sitting upon this, this act right here. Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1997. Watch this. Let's go into that. Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1996, right? Read that. Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996. Mm -hmm. The Choice of Termination of Pregnancy Act, 1996, is the law governing abortion in South Africa. So this this act right here is the law that is governing abortion in South Africa. Read on. It allows abortion on demand up to the 12th week of pregnancy. Up to the 12th week of pregnancy, that's three months plus. Read on. Under broadly specified circumstances from the 13th to the 12th week. Hold on. So it says, it says what? It says it provides abortion up to the 12th week of pregnancy. That's three months. 
under broadly specified circumstances from the 13th to the 20th week. The 13th week, that's three months plus. The 20th week, that's six months plus. That means in South Africa, when you are six months plus pregnant, you can get an abortion based on this. Based on this choice on termination of pregnancy act. Okay, go ahead. And only for serious medical reasons after the 20th week. Go ahead. The act has been described by the Gut Marcher Institute as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Read that part again. The act has been what? The act has been described by the Gut Marcher Institute as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. It says the, the, terminate, the choice on termination of pregnancy act, it was, or the, the law which is governing abortion in South Africa, it says it has been described by the Gut Marcher Institute as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. In the world, not in South Africa, not in Africa, no, in the world. That means South Africa is what? Is up there with the first world countries when it comes to abortion. That's why abortion is so high in South Africa, because of this law right here. And this law, that woman, she is basing all her arguments on this thing. I'm going to show you something. You see that part right there when it says it has been described as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Isaiah 32 verse 5. I'm going to show you. Why, why, why the Gatmaga Institute is describing the abortion laws in South Africa as one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world. Isaiah talks about this thing. Isaiah 32, start at verse 5. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 5. Come on. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Mm -hmm. Nor the child said to be bountiful. It says the vile person shall be no more called liberal because the liberal is the vile person. The most that God says when you are liberal, you are vile, you are disgusting, you are worse than anything on this earth. And guess what? That woman, she thinks this, this verse right here. And because she's supporting this law right here to kill our sons and our daughters. Read. For the vile person will speak villainy. Villainy. For the vile person will speak villainy. That woman right here, that black woman, she's speaking villainy because she's supporting the killing of her sons and daughters based on the choice on termination of pregnancy act. Hold this. Give me Psalms. Give me Psalms 94 verse 20. I'm going to show you what this law actually is. What does the Bible say about it? Because this law is licensed to kill. I'm going to show you that. Give me that in Psalms 94 verse 20. Psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Come on. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, mm -hmm. which frameth mischief by a law? You see what the Bible is asking? It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? What is the throne of iniquity? A throne is a kingdom. It says, shall the kingdom of sin have fellowship with thee? The kingdom of sin is America. America is the kingdom of sin. Europe is a kingdom of sin. God is asking the most High God to David is saying, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. So God is telling you that America will frame mischief by a law. Because remember, South Africa is a colonial state. Okay. Let me share my screen once again. So read the verse again. Psalms 94 verse 20. Psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Come on. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which mm -hmm. frame it mischief by a law? He says they frame mischief by law. So what is the mischief? The mischief is the killing of our sons and daughters. What is the law that, 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 the law that governs the mischief? Choice on termination of pregnancy act. That is the law that is supporting this mischief. The law that supports this sin. The killing of our sons and daughters is supported by this law right here. That's what King David is saying. Read the verse again, verse 20. Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which mm -hmm. frameth mischief by a law? So the choice on termination of pregnancy act of 1996, that is the law that governs mischief. What is the mischief? Choice on termination of pregnancy act to kill our sons and daughters. Read. 
They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. You see that thing? So this woman has, has what? What did she do? This black woman, Dr. Kalemuku Kalemuku Gay, what she has done is that she has decided to do what? To make league with the throne of iniquity, the kingdom of sin. You understand? They gather against the soul of the righteous to do what? And condemn the innocent blood. And condemn the innocent blood and kill the innocent blood, meaning the sons and daughters that are aborted. So this woman is in support of white supremacy. That's what I want you sisters, to, especially you sisters. I want you sisters to understand what's coming out here. Okay, now go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 32, read verse 6 again. Isaiah 32, verse 6. Read. For the vile person will speak villainy. The vile person is that sister that speaks villainy. Okay, come on. And his heart will work iniquity. His, his, her mind is working iniquity, meaning sin. Read. To practice hypocrisy. He's practicing hypocrisy, that black woman. Because she's saying she is a she's an abortion provider. Hold on. How did she how was she born? How was she conceived? Why didn't her mother make the decision that she's making now to kill the sons of the sons and our the, our sons and our daughters? Her mother didn't make that decision. But now she's been given license to kill our sons and our daughters. Who's supporting this black woman? The so-called white man, the South African government. Because the South African government is funded by the World Bank. You understand? United Nations, the EU, America. Keep reading. And to utter error against the Lord. Yeah, she is uttering error against the Lord because she's advocating the killing of her sons and daughters. Read. To make empty the soul of the hungry. Mm -hmm. And he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fade. You will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail because our sisters, they desperately need the laws of God. She is an opportunist. She has mindset. She has the same mindset as our oppressor. She envies the oppressor so much that she's willing to sacrifice her own sons and daughters just so that she can what? She can be given promotions and all that. And I'm going to show you that. Keep going. The instruments also of the trail are evil. The instruments of the white man, of the white, of the so-called white man, they are evil. What are the instruments? Choice on termination of pregnancy act. That's the instrument of the child. The child is making reference to the so-called white man, America, Europe, the South African government. They are the child. Their instrument is what? Choice on termination of pregnancy act. The advocating of our, of the killing of our sons and daughters. I have to keep mentioning it over and over because it is murder. Okay, read. Really? He devises wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words. The wicked devices that they devise is what? It says, no, tell her, they say you can just pick up the phone and call these uh, abortion providers. They'll send you the pills by post. And you just follow the pills. You just have to go to the bathroom and get rid of the, of the baby like that. This is madness. Okay, read. Even when the needy speaketh right. Even when the needy speaketh right. No, I want to keep the baby. I love my baby. They say, no, you know what? You, you, you know you are poor. You see, you don't have a job. You see, your family is struggling and all that. You know, how are you going to take care of the child and all that? They put fear on these sisters. Guess what? They ended up killing their sons and their daughters. And the black woman is in the forefront. You can't make this up. Read. But the liberal devices liberal things. But the liberal, this woman is a liberal. The liberal will devise liberal things. What are the liberal things? Abortion is a liberal instrument to destroy our community. Read. Right? And by liberal things shall he stand. And by liberal things, what are the liberal things? Choice on termination of pregnancy act. That's the liberal things that she's standing upon. Watch what the Bible says to these wicked black women that support white supremacy. Read. Right? Rise up, you women that are at ease. You hear what the Bible is saying? This is the most like God is saying. Rise up, you women that are at ease. That black woman, Dr. Tanemufuke, she's at ease. She's okay with the killing of her sons and daughters. She's proudly saying, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an I'm abortion provider. She's speaking like she's providing services to deliver the potatoes and tomatoes. Hmm? 
Keep going. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. You hear what the Bible is saying? Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. That woman is careless. She don't give a damn about her own people. Okay? That's what the Most High God says. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Meaning, hear what the Most High God says. Read. Give ear unto my speech. Come on. Many days and years shall you be troubled. The Most High God says he's going to trouble these black women that are doing this. He's going to trouble these black women that are advocating for the killing of our sons and daughters and supporting white supremacy, which is the killing of our sons and our daughters through abortion. The Most High God says he's going to trouble the black women. And what is the trouble? Many of these black women are not married. They've got kids. They are not married. Nobody can deal with them. They are single, independent black women. But guess what? They submit themselves to the white man, but they don't respect the black man. They don't respect the black son that they are advocating, that they are killing. They don't give a damn about them. You understand? That's why they are overweight. They are single, but they've got degrees. But those degrees, they don't give, they don't do nothing for our nation. They don't do nothing for our community. You understand? Read. Ye careless women. Mm, ye careless what? Ye careless women. Ye careless women. That woman, that black woman, she's a careless woman. Read. For the vintage shall fade. Mm -hmm. The gathering shall not come. The vintage will fail because, guess what? They don't, they say to hell with the Bible and the gathering shall not come. Guess what? Now, we turn to gather our sons and daughters. They are fighting against that. Read. Tremble, you women that are at ease. The most high God is repeating himself again. He says, tremble. You better be scared, you black women. You careless black women that are condoning about that, that are supporting abortion. Read. Be troubled, ye careless ones. He says, be troubled, ye careless ones. Read. Strip you and make you bare. Mm -hmm. And get sackcloth upon your loins. God says, you better mourn. You better be afraid, you black women that are supporting the killing of our sons and daughters. We don't care. We don't give a damn about their degrees because their degrees are useless to us. They go to school and guess what? They support white supremacy. Our communities are vulnerable. That, that woman, she's no different from these politicians that come to play on the vulnerability of our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers. They are the same way. They, they, the same thing that the white men did when they conquered us. These black women are doing the same thing to their own young sisters and their older ones. They are doing the same thing. You understand? But we beg. The most High God has raised us up. We're going to shut down. We're going to clean up with the laws of God. Understand that. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. I want to show you really why the black woman is doing this. I'm going to show you why she's doing this. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. Read. For God created man to be immortal. God created man to be immortal, to live forever. Read. And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Because we, the men, we are made in the image of God. The sisters are made in the image of us. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil. Through envy of the what? Through envy of the devil. Through envy of the devil, through envy of the devil, come on, came death into the world. Because of envy of the devil. Who was envying the devil? The black woman, our foremother Eve. She envied the devil so much so that she was willing to do what? To destroy the greatest kingdom that ever existed that the black man ruled over. The black woman, she envies the white man. That's why she's supporting the system that the white man is putting in our communities to destroy us. To, because of envy of the devil. The black woman, she envies the white man. That's why she's willing to destroy her own nation for the sake of what? For the sake of, sake of supporting white supremacy. Man, these black women, they make me sick. I'm not talking about all sisters. I'm talking about these particular black women that support the killing of our sons and daughters. Yeah, they make me sick. Yeah, they do. Okay. Read that thing again, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 24. Read. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil, 
came death into the world. You see that thing? Go ahead. And they that do hold of his side to find it. They that do hold of his side, meaning what? They hold, they, they hold, they hold the doctrine of that came with the devil. Who does that? The black woman. Is that the black woman they hold side to the doctrine of the, the white man and they find it. And guess what? They are empowered. Black woman, the black woman is the only woman that says, I need empowerment. You don't hear the white woman says that. You don't hear the Chinese woman speak like that. It's only the black woman that talks about black women empowerment. She's the only one that says stuff like that. But she's not empowered to help a community to build it up. No, she gets empowered to destroy her own community. That's why they get empowered. And guess what? They give, they provide platforms for them to speak, to, to send messages to the young girls to destroy them too. That's why I say they make me sick. Now watch this. Give me that, because the most that God, guess what? They make him sick too. Give me that in Isaiah. Let me show you the most that God is sick of them too. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 65. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 5. Watch this thing right here. Okay. You know what? Start of verse 2. I'm going to show you the mindset of these black women that support abortion. Read it. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 2. Read I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, mm -hmm. which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. You see that thing? That black woman, she's rebellious against the laws of God. She's walking in the way that is not good after her own thoughts. But it's not really her thoughts because she envies the devil. And because she envies the devil, her mindset is the mindset of the devil. Go ahead. Read verse 5. Watch this. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. which say stand by thyself come not near to me for i am holier than thou i have got a phd i'm a medical doctor i know what i'm talking about read these are a smoke in my nose these are a smoke in god's nose read a fire that burneth all the day they make the most like god sick okay now watch this let's go back to the article i'm not done with that i'm not done Let's go back. I just need to deal with that liberal stuff. Because that woman, she's, she's liberal. Okay, she's a liberal. Now, let's read this. Okay, Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act of 1996. Now, I want you to read this thing right here. Okay. Um, read the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy. Read this. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. Stop right there. Read the verse. Read that thing again. Excuse me, not the verse. Read the paragraph again. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. So now, the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, it says, was introduced in the first post-apartheid parliament. What is the post-apartheid parliament? Hmm. Read that for me. Post-apartheid parliament. Post-apartheid parliament, general mm -hmm. elections. General elections were held in South Africa between 26 and 29 April 1994. Come on. The elections were the first in which citizens of all races were allowed to take part and were therefore also the first held with universal suffrage. You, suffrage means what? It goes into um, a petition of some sort. So that for what? For apartheid to stop, right? So the post-apartheid parliament is the parliament of what? Mandela. Nelson Mandela, he is the president of the post-apartheid parliament. Okay, now let's keep reading. It implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress's policy framework. Is that the post-apartheid parliament of Nelson Mandela, it implemented the statement in the governing African National Congress's policy framework. So the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act is the ANC's policy framework. It's part of ANC's policy framework. That what? That every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to their own beliefs. According to their own feelings. That's what it means. According to their own beliefs. So ANC's policy framework was to give the right to our sisters to give them license to kill their kids. 
I want you sisters to understand, especially our mothers that like to vote for ANC and all of that, they gave you license to kill your own children. But every year you still want to vote. Oh, Tuma Mina, Tuma Mina, this. Look what they are advocating. That's the, that's the government you vote for. That's the government you support. The government that gives you license to kill your children. Hmm? Read that part again. That every woman what? That every woman must have the right to choose whether or not to have an early termination of pregnancy according to her own beliefs. According to her own feelings, how she feels in her heart. Because they say, follow your heart, follow your dream. But everything that is in your mind was given to you by your slave master. So it's not your mind at all. Keep reading. Although it was requested that parliament members should be allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs. Stop right there. So they were given, an, and the, the, the members of parliament of the ANC were given, they said they were allowed to vote according to their personal beliefs. Meaning what? Meaning they will be given an opportunity. So me, I'm not about this. I don't support abortion. And there are those that, those demons that will say we support it, right? Watch what happens next. Keep going. The ruling party ruled that its own members may not vote against the act. You see what you see what the post-apartheid parliament did of Mandela? The post-parliament the post-apartheid parliament of Nelson Mandela, it says the ruling party ruled that its own members may not vote against the act. Meaning they stopped our mothers that did not agree with abortion. They said, No, you are not allowed to vote against this bill. You must agree with it. They forced them in other ways. That's why it says the vile person will seek villainy. This is villainy. Okay, go ahead. And the act passed by 209 votes to 87. Uh -huh. Five abstained, 99 were absent. Mm -hmm. It came into force on 1st February 1997. It came into what? It came into force. Then on 1st February. Them. They forced them. They forced, that's why it, it came into force. That's what it means. They forced them to agree. If they listen, you're going to vote, you agree with this bill. So guess what? That, what? You ever notice a lot of our women, they support the ANC is because the ANC gives them license to do this type of thing, to kill their sons and their daughters. And the black man has no say. No, the black man has a say in the spirit of Christ. We're not going to keep quiet. We're not going to shut up. We're going to bring the laws of God, whether they like it or not, whether they want to hear it or not. We're going to teach the Bible with boldness. No fear, no favor. Because we love our people. Understand that. Give me that in Isaiah real quick. I'm going to show you. We're not going to keep quiet. Mm -mm. Them days are over. Okay? Give me some, uh, uh, Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62, verse 6. Because this is what God commanded the black men to do. We're not going to keep quiet. Okay? Read. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Read. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O we Jerusalem. We are the watchmen. We are the leaders of Israel. We are the watchmen. The most High God says, I have set up watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. Come on. Which shall never hold their peace day nor night. We're not going to keep quiet. Day nor night. That's why we teach during the day. We teach at night. We are not going to keep quiet. We want to teach the laws of God until kingdom come. Read. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. If you, if this is commandment from the Most High God. God says, ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. We're not going to keep quiet. Read. And give him no rest. We're not going to give the Lord rest until he does what? Till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. We're not going to keep quiet until Jerusalem is made a praise in the earth. These black women that support abortion, they don't want the Jerusalem to be a place in the earth. They want us, if it was up to the black women, the black men will go back into slavery and be in chains. We're still in slavery, but if it was up to the these black women that got degrees, these black women that have given position of power, if it was up to them, the black men will still be in chains right now. I'm telling you straight. I'm showing you the mindset of these black women that are saying, I'm educated. They don't give a damn about their community. They don't give a damn. And that's what you are seeing with this woman, Variki Dr. Kalem Mufuke. She's the enemy of progress. She hates, their, she hates her own people. I'm telling you right now, I need you sisters to understand this thing. This is the war that we're up against. Okay? Now, let me go back to the article. 
Because I'm not going to come down about this thing. This is some evil stuff. We're not keeping quiet on this. Okay? Now read that. Read that first paragraph. During the first 12 weeks of a pregnancy, an abortion may be performed at the request of the woman. You see, you see that stuff right there? During the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, an abortion may be performed at the request of the woman. Remember, it says, my choice, my body. Go ahead. From the 13th to the 20th week, a pregnancy may be terminated if it endangers the woman's mental or physical health. How the hell do they know? So the woman is self-diagnosing herself. She says, no, I'm suffering mental and physical health, so therefore I don't want the baby. No, no, no. They say, I still want to groove. Yes, I go groove, so therefore I don't want this baby. Kill the baby. We? If the fetus may suffer from a severe mental or physical abnormality. How, how, how? In fact, let me ask you a question. How does the white man know that the baby in a woman's stomach will be suffering mental, mental abnormality? How do they know? Because the, the white men don't control the, the, the development of the growth of the baby. The most high God is in control of that. The most high God is the one that is in control of all of that. So how the hell does the white man know the development, the, the baby's mental, uh, mental health and all that? How does he know? Keep going. If the pregnancy resulted from rape or incest. Guess what? That baby, that's real. That's less than 0.99%. The pregnancies that regard, end up in rape or incest, that's less than a percent. So we're not going to focus on that because they like to throw stuff like that in there. Really? Or if it would significantly affect the woman's social or economic substances, that's circumstances. It says if it would significantly affect the woman's social or economic circumstances. You see that part right there? They say they, that's how they brainwash our sisters to say, you are, how are you going to take care of the baby? You know, you are not working or you know your family is struggling. You see, you are poor. Listen, we were poor. We, I, never, I didn't grow up rich, but here I am. My parents, they worked. They provided for us. My parents are not rich. How, none of our parents are rich, but look where we are now. So all of that, that's just BS. That's not true. Okay, come on. After the 20th week, a pregnancy may only be terminated if it could endanger a woman's life. You see that? They don't care about the baby. They say a pregnancy may only be terminated after the 20th week if it could endanger the woman's life. So they don't care about the baby at all. Read. If the fetus is severely malformed. Yes, they're just throwing stuff in there. Go ahead. Or if there is a risk of severe injury to the fetus. Again, another, another stuff that Esau likes to just throw garbage in there. What Esau here is telling you, say, listen, I'm going to kill the baby. You black women, you want to kill the baby because you still want to grow. You still want to track your behind on Instagram and TikTok. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to create an environment for you to do that thing. Keep going. An abortion in the first 12 weeks may be performed by a medical practitioner or by an appropriately trained nurse or midwife. After 12 weeks, it may only be performed by a doctor. Mm -hmm. Jump down to the next part. Read that part right there. This one. An abortion can only be performed with the informed consent of the woman. It says an abortion can only be performed with the informed consent of the woman. Because you know what they say? They say, no, that's your boss. You do whatever you want. You make the decision. Nobody can tell you. I've got daughters. You telling me that my daughter will come up and say, I want to have an abortion. I'll say, hell to the no. And the most I will put you to death. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to tell him. You. Go, I hope you die while you are having that abortion. That's what I'm going to tell him. Because that's against the laws of God. That means they are telling you that you as a father have no say. You as the husband, you have no say. That's what, the, that's what they are telling you. Here. Okay? Read. And no other person's consent may be required. You see that part right there? No other person's consent may be required. When we go back to the abortion in South Africa, I'm going to show you the person that they are talking about when it says no other person's consent may be required. Read on. Even in the case where a minor is pregnant. That's talking about teenage pregnancy, which I'm going to deal with that some other lesson. Go ahead. She must be advised to discuss it with her parents. 
mm-hmm. guardian or family, but their consent is not required. This white man is the devil. Is is in a part right there? It says she is. She must be advised to discuss it with her parents, guardian or family, but their consent is not required. Whatever happened, give me Exodus twenty verse twelve. Whatever happened to this law? Whatever happened to this law right here that we're about to read? It says the parents' consent are not required. So these parents, they take care of this child. They feed her. They clothe her. But their consent is not required. Are you kidding? So you telling me that we're supposed to be okay with this garbage? We're not going to be okay with this. Okay? Read that thing for me. Exodus 20 verse 12. Read it. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. Mm-hmm that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So when a young girl goes out, they don't get consent from the parents, they don't talk to the parents, they just go out and speak to Marie Stokes. They speak to Dr. Kale Mufuke. Hmm? It says they don't have to get consent. So you see what God is saying if you don't honor your father and your mother? It says your days, your days will not be long upon the earth. That's why these kids, they die while they are given birth. They die while they're committing these abortions. That's why they drop dead. There's a high mortality rate of these women dying while they are having abortion. Because they are not what they are not obeying the what they are not observing the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother. That's why they die early. Their parents, parents are burying their kids. Because of who Dr. Kalem forget. Oh my God, man. Keep going. When a pregnant woman is seriously mentally ill or in a coma, her pregnancy may be terminated with the consent of a spouse or guardian or on the authority of two doctors without the consent of the spouse or guardian if there is a serious medical risk. Meaning what? The doctors, they also have cut blood. They can just kill the baby without telling you. That's what they are saying. But I want you to read the next paragraph. Let me show you how the rabbit, the rabbit hole goes. Watch this. You're going to be shocked when you see stuff like this. Okay, read it. Watch this. Me, I'm not shocked. But I want you to see. Listen. I want you to. Reading is fundamental in this. You must read. Watch this. Read it. It is a crime for anyone to perform an abortion without being qualified to do so. Guess what? So they've given themselves license to kill. So who's arresting them? Who's holding them accountable when they're killing our sons and daughters? Nobody. But there is a God. Understand that. Read. Or in an unapproved facility. It is also a crime for anyone to prevent a legal abortion or obstruct access to an abortion facility. Stop right there. Read that part again. It is what? It is also a crime for anyone to prevent a legal abortion. Stop right there. There is no such thing as a legal abortion. Let me say that again, because they like to throw words in there. There is no such thing as legal abortion. Abortion is murder. What are you talking about? Abortion is murder. There is no such thing as legal abortion. Because when you say abortion is legal, you are saying murder is legal. That's what you're saying. Give me the sixth commandment again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Read. Thou shalt not kill. It's very clear. The most that God is telling you, thou shall not kill. So guess what? There's no such thing as legal abortion. That means they're saying, Uri, guess what? It's, it's okay to kill now. You see, this, by the way, by, but remember, this Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act is part of the ANC policy framework, which is part of the, which is part of democracy. So democracy and Christianity is two sides of the same demonic coin. Because democracy says, you can kill. Christianity says, you are not under the law. What's the difference? They are all saying the same thing because it's all the same. Read, go back to the article. It is also a crime for anyone to prevent a legal abortion or obstruct access to an abortion facility. What's the this? penalty? The penalty is a fine or imprisonment for up to 10 years. I want you to read that part again. The penalty is what now? The penalty is a fine or imprisonment for up to 10 years. You can make this up. 
So it's a crime for you to stop. It's a crime for you to stop killing. Do, do you men understand this? It is a crime for you to stop killing. I hope you understand because abortion is mad. There's no, you cannot, there's no way you're going to convince me because the most that God is telling you right there, thou shalt not kill. So according to the ANC's policy framework, it is a crime for you not to kill. Mm. I hope you understand that. I hope you sisters can soak this up. Now, let's go back. I'm just showing you sisters what we're dealing with, okay? This is the war that we're up against. Okay, that's why we need you sisters to support the truth. Okay, now read that thing again. Abortion in South Africa. Abortion in South Africa. Wait. Abortion in South Africa is legal on request during the first 12 weeks of pregnancy mm -hmm. and under certain conditions afterwards. Wait. Abortion is provided free at government hospitals and a telemedical or pills by post service is provided by Mary Stokes, South Africa. So that woman, she's actually also, she's doing the same thing that Mary Stokes is doing. Mary Stokes was started in 1993. So she's a tele, they're a telemedical um, company. They provide pills by post. During the coronavirus, Mary Stokes has been very instrumental in giving our, 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 our young girls license to what? To commit abortion. Because they just send the pills by post. You just swallow them, you go to the bathroom, they say you must have a bathroom where you can flush, so you can flush the baby down the toilet. So that woman, she supports that. I'm gonna show you the organization that she was a part of. Keep going. And abortion clinic Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Abortion was legal only under very limited circumstances until 1st February, 1997, when the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act came into force providing abortion on demand for a variety of cases. Now watch this. Because I, I went over this before. I'm going over it again because repetition is necessary. Now read the legal position. Let's see the legal position, South Africa's legal position on abortion. Okay, read it in South Africa. Read it. In South Africa, a woman of any age can get an abortion on request with no reasons given if she is less than 12 weeks pregnant. Now, you see the, the key point is that he says, a woman of any age, you see that part right there? A woman of any age can get an abortion on request. So that means a 10 year old, because they fall pregnant now, a 11 year old, 13 year old, they fall pregnant, they, they, will, be, they will be given access to terminate the pregnancy, to not terminate, to kill the baby. Let me put it plain, okay? If she's less than 12 weeks, meaning less than three months, go ahead. If she's between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant, mm -hmm. she can get the abortion if A, her Stop own right physical. It says if she's between 13 and 20 weeks pregnant, 13, that's three months plus, 20 weeks, that's five months plus. Okay, go ahead. If A, her own physical or mental health is at stake. How? Hold on a second. It says these are the reasons that that's why a variety of a variety of cases. A, her own physical or mental health is at stake. Hmm. They just come up with all these type of reasons to what to kill. I'm gonna show you something. Give me Sarah 32 verse 17. I'm gonna show you what this says. All these things was her own physical or mental health is at stake. I'm gonna show you what God calls these things. I'm gonna show you what the Lord calls them. Sarah 32 verse 17. This is what God calls these things. Okay. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 17. Come on. A sinful man will not be reproved, mm -hmm. but findeth an excuse according to his will. You see that part right there? A sinful man or woman will not be corrected. They will not be reformed because they're dumb as hell, but findeth an excuse according to his will. The, the, what we're reading here, these are all excuses. God calls them excuses because all this is, is a what? Is a code word to mean sin. We're advocating sin. We're advocating murder. That's what they're doing. Okay? Go back to the article. B. The baby will have severe mental or physical abnormalities. 
is that the baby will have severe or mental or physical abnormalities. Listen, the most High God is the one that decides who, who gets conceived. He's the one that does it. And the baby grows is not because of the white man's sign. It's because of the most High God of heaven and earth. Read. C. She is pregnant because of incest. Less than a percent. Go ahead. D. She is pregnant because of rape. Less than a percent. Go ahead. Or E. She is of the personal opinion Stop that right the here. economy. Oh, 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 oh. Mm -mm. She is of the what now? She is of the personal opinion. She is of the personal opinion. Personal opinion, meaning how she feels in her mind. Go ahead. She is of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for the termination of pregnancy. Let's see what the Bible says about opinion. Okay, watch this. Give me Sarah chapter 3, verse 24. It says she is of the personal opinion that her economic or social situation is sufficient reason for her for the termination of pregnancy, for the killing of a baby. What does the Bible say about, about opinion? Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 24. Come on. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Many are deceived by their own vain opinion. So an opinion is a deception. Opinion is a deception because it's a feeling. Meaning what? Sin. Opinion is a sinful act. Keep going. And an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. An evil suspicion. What is the evil suspicion? No, she is of the person. The evil suspicion is she is of the personal opinion that her economic social situation is sufficient reason for her to kill her baby. That's the suspicion. And it overthrows the judgment because she's got enablers. She's got people like what Dr. Kale Mufugay to convince her that you see you are poor. You see your parents cannot take care of you. You see, look at, look at your living condition. That's the, that, that, those are enablers. You understand? The choice on termination of pregnancy act, that's another way to enable our sisters to kill their kids. To kill our kids. Let me rephrase that. To kill our sons and our daughters. Okay? Keep reading. No, no, go back to the article. If she is more than 20 weeks pregnant, meaning what? She she's can... more than, hold on, more than 20 weeks pregnant, meaning she's six months plus, because now South Africa ANC's policy framework allows for full term abortions to be to be what to be carried out. She's more than 20 weeks, she's more than six months pregnant. Okay, come on. If she is more than 20 weeks pregnant, she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus's life is in danger. Mm -hmm. They are likely to be serious birth defects. Now, I want you to see something. You see, the most High God will make them will make them to fall upon their own word. You see that part right there? It says, or oh, if the fetus is life. I think what they say is that, no, it's not a baby. It says it's just a fetus. So when you're committing abortion, it's not a baby yet, it's a fetus. But you see what they say? Is that the fetus is life. Hmm. The most is a genius. He will make them to fall upon the most the, or their own self. He will make them to eat their own words. It says the fetus is life. Because it's a life. But they've convinced the black woman to say, no, 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 it's not a life, it's a fetus. No, no, they say a fetus is life. Watch this. Give me Sarah 15 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. I'm going to take this thing slow. Okay? It's the Sabbath day. Oh, praise the Lord. Sarah 15 verse 20. I still have a lot to, to come. So stay with me. Read that thing for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 15 verse 20. Come on. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. The most that God has not commanded any man or woman to do wickedness. Read. Really? Neither has he given any man license to sin. The most that God has not given the black woman license to kill our sons and our daughters. The most that didn't do that. But the white man has given the black woman license to kill. Buto Katalemu Pugeng, she is a prime example. She supports white supremacy. Okay? Give me Zechariah chapter 1 verse 14. 
I'm going to show you because of the, the black woman, because she envies the so called white man. Iso Irom, guess what? She's going to, she, she's helping the white man to kill our sons and our daughters, to eradicate us. Because when you remember, if you know the history, the Tuskegee experiment, the Tuskegee experiment where they were infecting black men with syphilis and all that with sexually transmitted diseases, guess who was in the forefront of the eugenics program? of the father of Bill Gates, the black woman. The black woman, she, let me Google that thing. I'm gonna show you that, listen, mm. man, the black woman, oh my God, man. Let me show you. The Tuskegee, the Tuskegee experiment. I'm gonna show you that thing right now. Oh yes. They were in injecting black men with syphilis. Excuse me, syphilis. Hmm. Oh yes. Oh yes, yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna show you that, listen. Let me share my screen. I'm gonna show you that the black woman, man. Oh my God, man. Now, this right here is the Tuskegee syphilis study. Now, I want you to read that. Tuskegee syphilis study, mm -hmm. reading from wikipedia.org. Come on. The Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro maze. Ray? Was a study conducted between 1932 and 1972 by the United States Public Health Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention on a group of nearly 400 African-Americans with syphilis. You see what they were doing? They were experimenting with the syphilis, with syphilis on our brothers over there in the United States. I'm gonna show you who was in the forefront to go into the black community to inject black men. This demon right here, Eunice Rivers, this woman right here, this black woman. This black woman right here, yes, this one. She was in the midst of it, supporting this whole thing. Just like Talem Mukuge. They are, listen, they are doing the same thing. The same thing that they did back then. They were what? They were, she, support, she supported these white Edomites to do what? To conduct experiments on our brothers in the United States. You can't make this up here. Yeah. You cannot make this stuff up, okay? So what I'm showing you is, it's, it's nothing new. That which has happened back then, is happening today again. That's what you read in Ecclesiastes 1. What King Solomon talked about regeneration. Yes, there's no new thing under the sun. Now watch this. Give me Zechariah 1 verse 14. Zechariah chapter 1. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 14. Come on. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and, and for Zion with a great jealousy. Mm -hmm. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that I at ease. Come on. For I, was a, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. It says the heathens they had for the affliction. Already we are afflicted as a nation, but these other nations they are making it worse. Guess what? The black woman is doing the same thing because the black woman she's acting as the interface between the heathens that are making our situation worse. They are making our conditions worse. The black woman says, "Don't worry, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna support you to kill our to kill my nation." Doctor Kalemu Fukeng, she's at the forefront of this. She's helping forward our affliction. She's making our situation worse by supporting white supremacy, white murderous supremacy regime. That's what she's doing. And she's not by herself, by the way. You, she's got, there's another brother in Israel, another brother, another black man who also is supporting this thing and he died. Mm -hmm. The most like God has something to do with that. Give me Exodus 21 verse 22. Because here they said the fetus is life. The fetus is life. 
Hmm? Read that. Exodus 21, verse 22. Exodus chapter 21, verse 22. Come on. If man strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her. So if this woman is pregnant, this, the woman is pregnant, and two men are fighting together. They are fighting against themselves. And it says they hurt a woman that is pregnant. Go ahead. So that her fruit depart from her, and yet no mischief follow. And yet no mischief follow. Go ahead. He shall be surely punished according as the woman's husband will lay upon him. Mm -hmm. And he shall pay as the judge is determined. Now watch the next verse. Go ahead. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. Read that verse again, verse 23. And if any what? And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life. If any mischief follow to the child that she's carrying, it says, then thou shalt give life for life. Because it's not a fetus, it's a life. That's what the most that God is saying. It's not a fetus, it's a life. But the most that, the, but the black women, men, especially these, I've got a PhD one, they, those ones, you better stay away from that type of women if they cannot repent. Because their enemy, they, they are the reason why the black women, especially our young girls, our sisters, they're committing abortions left, right, and center because they are the ones that are supporting this garbage. Okay? Give me Isaiah 57, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 3. Come on. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorcerers, mm -hmm. the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Stop right there. Because remember, these black women, they have enablers. They have supporters. Guess who's supporting them? Black, other black men who are evil as hell. Read that verse again, verse 3. I'm going to show you that. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 3. Come on. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Ye sons of the sorcerers, because guess what? These black men that are enabling these black women to go off, to continue to convince our young girls to commit abortion, they are the seed of adulterers and whores. That's what God is saying. Now watch this. Let me play this video right quick. I'm going to show you something. Right there. Oh, I'm coming for them this day. I'm coming for them. Now listen to this now. Well, let's continue here tonight. South Africa legalized abortion in 1997, and it can be done within the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Thereafter, women who are pregnant for 13 weeks or more can terminate under certain circumstances. Abortion is free at government hospitals, but however, few clinics uh, offer them, and many women risk their lives using illegal abortion facilities. Tonight, we question why this is the case. We're joined by the UN Special Rapporteur on Right to Health, Dr. Tlaleng Mufugeng. You see that thing? It says she's a UN Special Rapporteur. She's now employed by the United Nations. You see how this works? You support the killing of your sons and daughters, and the white man gives you a reward. Hold this. Give me Isaiah 5, verse 23. We coming back to this video. Isaiah chapter 5. I'm going to show you something. Me, I'm not moved by these black women that have got degrees, but they don't give a damn about the laws of God. They don't give a damn about their nation. That's why the most High God says he's calling the men first. Now read that. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 23. Come on. Which justify the wicked for reward. You see that thing? These black women, they justify the wicked. Who's the wicked? The so-called white man. Esau, Edom. They justify this so-called white man by supporting his system of killing of our sons and daughters. Read. Right? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. You see that thing? So they get a reward for what? For supporting white supremacy the killing of their of of her own sons and daughters of her own nation they will give you a reward give me luke 16 verse 15. the most high god don't give a damn about their degree he don't give a damn okay neither do we because they are not for the benefit of our nation they get the degrees to support white supremacy read 
Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. They justify themselves before men by their degrees. No, the reason why we do it is because we're trying to provide legal health access to killing of our sons and daughters. Are you kidding? Go ahead. But God knoweth your hearts. The most of God knows their hearts because what? They seek villainy. They practice hypocrisy. Go ahead. For that which is highly esteemed among men. That which is highly esteemed among men, their degrees and all that, is what, to, is what in the sight of God? Is abomination in the sight of God. Their degrees are abomination to the most high God because these degrees are not for the uplifting of our nation. It's for genocide. It was basically the, white, the so-called white man has given these black women license to commit genocide in our nation. This is genocide. Understand that. I hope you men can see this thing. Don't be sleeping up in here. Now, let's go back. Let me share my screen. Dr. Mufugeng, good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. It's been some time now that the termination of pregnancies has been legalized in South Africa. One wouldn't say that is the case when it comes to the actual reality of the delivery of those services to women across the public and the private sector. Um, that's very true, Kathy, and I think today is um, a very sad day for many of us who are working in the sector. Um, we've lost our guiding light. We've lost um, a person who was giving us so much strength, Professor Edim Shanga. So a black man was supporting these black women to kill our sons and daughters. Professor Edim Shanga. So now the nigga dropped dead. He dropped dead. So now she says she's mourning the brother, right? Watch this. And speaking of the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act, we can't speak about that act without talking about his incredible contribution in drafting that bill, in supporting civil society and supporting the parliamentary process. As we know, it was highly contested. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, we've lost a, a, a professional. We've lost someone who was an excellent academic, an exceptional clinician, and someone, by the way, who inspired me to do this work and do it in the manner that I do it. He used to be my my teacher and consultant at the mm. University of Guazul Natal, and at the time he was the head of department. So I know that many of us um, have very heavy hearts tonight mm. um, as, as we, we feel really um, his loss. Um, but I know that his, his work, his legacy is written in ink um, and he will live through all of us. Um, so I just wanted to just yeah. take that moment and send condolences, especially to his family, um, his, his wife and daughters, as well, of course, as his friends um, and colleagues. We will miss him dearly. Um, yeah, it's, it's really just a tough time. But in any case... Hold on. So now, let's get... Let's, 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 let's see the video of, of this guy, this guy that was supporting these black women to kill our sons and daughters. You understand? Watch this. Let me share my screen, okay? coming out of uh, today's sessions, mainly I think very interesting in terms of relating it back home here, noting that it's an international conference. Um, you know, the fact that yes, uh, abortions are legal in South Africa. However, when we look at the implementation, uh, when we look at, you know, uh, the, the backlash that women have to face while trying to access these services, the lack thereof of the services, specifically in your rural areas, and just in general the You see the part right there? is a specifically in the rural area. You see, you see where they target? I'm gonna show you really the white, this so-called white man, he is the devil the Bible speaks of. And guess what? This so-called white man, he doesn't do these things without consent of black, wicked black men and black women supporting him. And where do they go? They go to rural areas. They say, no, you see, you are poor, you're living in the conditions, you know, your parents are struggling and all that. And they forgot that they grew up in the same areas as well. But now because they've got degrees, they have the audacity to go back to the community to annihilate and to cause massive genocide in the communities that they grew up in. You can't make this stuff up.
difficulties that women and also girls of a reproductive age need to face while trying uh, to actually exercise this right, which is a constitutional right uh, in South Africa. But I think uh, to speak to us more and tell us, you know, in depth, uh, Dr. Mtlanga, who's going to, who's actually an advocate. That's the demon right there. Yeah, he's a demon. This is the demon that said, that taught that black woman that you just saw. He is the, this is the culprit behind that black woman. And who's behind him? The so-called white man is behind this demon right here. A big advocate in South Africa for women's rights, uh, specifically when it comes around the topic and the issue of abortions. Uh, doctor, tell us, I think most importantly, in some of the sessions uh, that uh, it came out, very uh, highlighted uh, the legalities and the backlash that women actually have uh, to face, specifically in your rural areas, being turned away from clinics, uh, being turned away from public hospitals. Yeah, the major issue that we, we, we have is that although the act is very uh, liberating, uh, it allows people to, women to make a decision about the, their practice. So they attended the International Abortion and Reproductive Justice Conference. Right from the time they get pregnant, right up to the time when they deliver. Um, it is quite difficult. Uh, look at that. What does that look like? Look at the conditions. Look at this. This is a slaughterhouse. Look at that thing right there. Are you men seeing this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, for them to access the services, uh, particularly when they want to have the pregnancies terminated under 20 weeks, uh, which is what the law allows. Uh, you see, all of them are hiding behind this demonic law. The Choice on Termination of Pregnancy, pregnancy Act. He's hiding behind it. She's hiding behind it. Go back to Psalms 94, verse 20 again. Psalms 94, verse 20. I want you to read that thing again. Please. Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Come on. Shall the throne of iniquity a fellowship with thee, which mm -hmm. frame it mischief by a law? They frame mischief by law. So both of them, they are hiding behind this mischief. What is the mischief? The killing of our sons and daughters, genocide. And now they are hiding behind the choice on termination of pregnancy act. That's the mischief. That's the law that is protecting the mischief. Go ahead. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. They said they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. The International Abortion and Reproductive Justice Conference. That's how they gather themselves together. To destroy our sons and our daughters. Read. And condemn the innocent blood. They can they keep meaning. This in the International Abortion and Reproductive Justice Conference. Guess what? It's a conference to condemn innocent blood, to kill the innocent sons and daughters. Give me Daniel 8, verse 25. I'm gonna show you where they get these policies from to do all of this garbage, to do all these massive gender mess. This is mass genocide, okay? Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Come on. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. We talk about the so-called white man here. Is that through his policy, remember the ANC policy framework of democracy was to legalize abortion. That was ANC's, ANC's policy framework. Where does ANC get their policy from? America, the U Europe, the EU. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his head, meaning mischief to prosper. So this demon that you see here on the screen, he's getting his policies from his father, the devil. Go ahead. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. He shall magnify himself in his heart. Go ahead. And by peace, shall destroy many. You see that thing? By peace. No, we are helping them because they don't have access to repro healthy, legal, reproductive health services. They are rural. They are in the rural areas and whatnot. There's a stigma surrounding this because that thing is murder. But it says, by peace, he shall destroy many. Because all of them, they are saying, no, we are, we are setting up for the women that don't have a voice. No, what about the voices of the sons and daughters that you are killing 
that are inside the stomachs of these women. What about their voices? We're speaking for them. Right now, we're speaking for the innocent sons and daughters that are being killed by men like these, by women like that you just saw. We're speaking for them in the spirit of Christ. Read that part again. And by peace, he shall what? And by peace shall destroy many. He shall destroy many of our people. Massive mass genocide. That's what you see. Um, various people um, quote uh, the traditions, the culture. Stop right there. You see that thing? Is as many people quote the traditions and the culture. Who's the many people? The people in the rural areas where they are going. I think they go to rural areas. They find grandmothers. They find grandfathers. And grandfathers and grandmothers don't agree to that garbage. That's what he's speaking against. He says, no, many people, they, they quote traditions and culture. What is our tradition and our culture? Give me chapter 17 real quick. Ecclesiastical, chapter 17. This is our culture that he's now speaking against. You know these black men, oh, they make me sick. Give me chapter 17. Read verse 11 for me. Ecclesiastical, chapter 17, verse 11. Come on. Beside this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for inheritance. You see that thing? He gave us knowledge and the law of life. The law of life. The law of life for an inheritance. Our heritage, our culture, is the law that gives life, which is God's commandment. Thou shalt not kill. But he's going against that because he's got a degree. He's a professor. Uh, in terms of uh, not wanting to assist these women. Uh, however, there's no woman who goes and wants to terminate her pregnancy willy-nilly. Hold on, wait a minute. Are you hearing this? <laughs> it says there's no woman who goes and commits an abortion willy-nilly. Hold on. These women don't have a gun to their head. These women commit, as they, they worship other gods. They worship the goddess of sex. They worship the goddess of uh, sexual immorality and going against the laws of marriage. That's the God they worship. Inanna, Easter. You understand? They worship Aphrodite, the goddess of sex and sexual immorality. Once they commit, uh, they commit, these, they commit adultery because they commit idolatry. Then they commit adultery. Then they fall pregnant. Then they commit murder. So they go willingly. They break God's commandment. Okay? They go through a lot of introspection, looking at themselves, looking at their circumstances, and then making the decision that continuing with the pregnancy is not, um, is not uh, theirs. They cannot afford that. Um, unfortunately, the, um, the government, the health services, uh, in most parts of the country do not pay particular attention to the rights of the women to make that decision about uh, their pregnancies. So uh, the... the I, I thought he said they don't really need to go there. But he's saying the government does not support them to make that decision to kill the baby. But he, he just said nobody really need, no, no women really need to go and commit an abortion. But now he's saying they have a right to do it. You see the hypocrisy? We do not train enough people, but the, uh, and when they go to facilities, then they get turned back. There are various stories of people being asked to come again and again until the period uh, expires. In other words, they become more than 13, 14 weeks where the nurses may be able to, to help, or they go above 20 weeks, which is when the doctors would, would have been uh, able to, to, to assist them under 20 weeks. So this uh, causes women then to be frustrated, uh, and many of them now have started going back to these um, illegal providers that are often unsafe and then uh, then they suffer the consequences or they suffer complications from from those. So, so that man right there, guess what? He supports white supremacy, what you just saw. He supports the massive, the mass genocide of our sons and daughters. You understand? Now I'm gonna show you something, right? Before I go back to that woman, you know what? Hmm. Give me 
Give me the book of First Maccabees 11 verse 23. I'm going to show you the mindset of this black man right here that you just saw. The most high God judged. The Lord judged him, of course. Give me First, first Maccabees. First Maccabees 11 verse 21. First Maccabees chapter 11 verse 21. Come on. Then certain ungodly persons. Certain ungodly persons. Who did what? Who hated their own people. Who hated their own people. This Professor Mshanga, oh, he hates his own people. That's what God is saying. He's an ungodly Negro who hated his own people so much so that he's pushing for the genocide of our sons and daughters. Go ahead. Went unto the king and they told went to the king. They went to the king. Who's the king? The white man. The so-called white man. Because they're the ones that are ruling this wicked kingdom. Go ahead. And told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. But what I'm showing you is Certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. They hate their own people. This Mshanga person and that uh, Mufugeng, Dr. Mufugeng, they hate their own people. That's what God is telling you. They hate their own people. I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Let's go back. I have not forgotten about the article that we just looked at. We went back there. Okay, so let me share my screen real quick so you can see. No, we must put this stuff out. We must, but people must learn this stuff. To be a legal framework and how to provide services for people. We know that in any case um, where um, the, the, there is stigma, there is discrimination, there is criminalization, it often impacts the people who... So the criminalization is the, the sisters, the, the nurses in the rural areas that are turning these women back to say, don't have an abortion. She's saying that's criminalization. So what about the killing? Is that not criminal? Hmm? Most marginalized, which are in this case, um, women and girls, because this issue is gendered. Poor women who can't afford private. You see that part right there? Remember we read, it says, the vile person will seek villainy to practice hypocrisy services, uh, women who are migrants who don't necessarily have a proof of address, right, to access a clinic facility. But we think about the intersexing issues around uh, people who use drugs. Um, we think about the needs of sex workers. And um, anyone in this country who requires a termination of pregnancy for any reason up to 12 weeks is allowed to do that um, on paper. But in but you, you brothers notice, right, that Professor Mshanga, right, he mentioned 12 weeks. She's mentioning 12 weeks, but the choice on termination of pregnancy eggs is not just under 12 weeks, it's beyond 12 weeks. You brothers saw that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You did they are very sneaky the way they explain this stuff because 12 mm. weeks is like okay, less than three months. They're not explaining that it's actually beyond 12 weeks. It goes that termination, mm. choice on termination of pregnancy goes beyond 12 weeks, it goes beyond 20 weeks. But they are only mentioned in 12 weeks. Very slick. Theory, in practical terms, it's not as easy as that. Mm. Dr. Dele, let me extend my condolences just on that note to yourself and the medical fraternity just on this loss. You talk about intersectionality, and when it comes to the issue of access around termination of pregnant pregnancies, it speaks to broader challenges around access to the healthcare system for many women in general. It doesn't begin and end with termination of pregnancies. Absolutely. Um, and because termination of pregnancy is the tiniest uh, medical condition, mm -hmm. um, we tend to, of course, talk about it more simply because of what it means when there are delays. We have many people um, who still have to save for transport money to be, access, to be able to access the nearest um, health facility to them. And that mm -hmm. often means um, there's two, three, four weeks, you know, that advance once a person has made that kind of a decision. Mm -hmm. We also know there's incredible stigma both in society but within the health system as well. And this keeps people away because many experience verbal abuse, um, you know, many mm -hmm. experience um, and very unsavory uh, uh, moments even when they do get that procedure done. And I think what's important is to talk about the incredible work um, that many healthcare providers, abortion providers around the country have been doing for many decades in trying to destigmatize um, the issue of abortion access. And Prof. Eddie was one person who always introduced himself um, as Professor Eddie Mshanga, who's a born again Christian.
Kwa Pride Day. So, Shanga is a born again Christian who supports abortion and is a he was what? He was advocating for abortion service providers including this demon that is sitting across the table. Let's go back. Kate, in trying to destigmatize um, the issue of abortion access. And Prof. Eddie was one person who always introduced himself um, as Professor Eddie Mshanga, who's a born again Christian, um, who's a man who's had a vasectomy, but also is a abort- Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. You see that thing? He's had a, a vasectomy. Mm. So that's the reason why, that's part of the reason why he's pushing this nonsense. He is there a vasectomy. That means he cannot go, he cannot over produce seed. He's there a vasectomy. Now he's doing the same thing to our sisters. What is he doing? He's killing our sons and daughters. He's doing population control. This is eugenics. This is a eugenics program that Bill Gates' father was pushing. He's pushing the same thing. She's pushing the same thing. A full on full-blown Christian is a says he's a born-again Christian. I told you about that thing. Christianity is a doctrine of devil. Look, look at a full-blown Christian. He's advocating for abortion and pushing for the support of abortion service providers. He not only that, he has had a vasectomy, changing of kind. You can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up provider to try and destigmatize that even within the medical uh, fraternity itself um, and really let the way to show all of us how even as healthcare providers we can be spiritual um, we can be religious and still um, you know uh, 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 do our duties in terms of the duty of care and, and, and the guiding principles of medicine but the stigma I think that you see that part right there did you see what did you hear what she said you said you can be spiritual you can be religious but you can still support the killing. You can support killing of sons and daughters. Innocent blood. Give me the book. Give me the book of Romans 7 verse 14. She said you can be spiritual. You can be religious. But you can still support abortion. I'm, la- I'm showing you that Christianity is a doctrine of devil. They support the killing of our sons and daughters. Romans 7 verse 14. Let's see what it means to be spiritual. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Come on. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So what is the law that is spiritual? Exodus 20. Read verse 13 again for me. Exodus chapter 20 verse 13. Come on. Thou shalt not kill. That's the law. Thou shalt not kill. So now knowing that the law is spiritual, you kill, guess what? You're not going to be okay in the head. That's why these black women are so confused. That's why these black women are monsters. Because why? Because of the dead bodies of the sons and daughters that they are killing every single time when they fall pregnant. Including these doctors, these professors. They are monsters. You understand? Now watch this. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. Now get get first Maccabees now chapter one verse eleven. I'm gonna show you the mindset of that woman, the mindset of Dr. Kalem Mufugeng and Dr. Edim Shan, Professor Edim Shan. I'm gonna show you the mindset that they have when it comes to their own people. Okay, go back to first Maccabees eleven verse twenty one first. Then we're gonna go to first Maccabees one verse eleven. First Maccabees chapter eleven verse twenty one. Come on. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. They hated their own people. So, I mean, they hate their own people. Okay? Drop that. First Maccabees 1 verse 11. I'm going to show you how much they hate their own people. Let me show you how deep this goes. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 1 verse 11. Come on. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that part again. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. Read it again. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. 
in those days, during the time of the Greeks, went out of Israel wicked men who hated their own people. Wicked men and women. Go ahead. Who persuaded many. They persuaded many to do what? They persuaded many of our sisters to commit abortion on the, on the, on the banner of, no, you are poor. No, you cannot take care of this baby. All that nonsense. Read. Say, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. Because the covenant, when you make a covenant with the heathen, that means you're going to worship their idols. When you worship their idols, you commit adultery. Then guess what? You fall pregnant, you commit murder. Go ahead. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Since we departed from them. Because since we're no longer among them, we're doing our own, we're keeping our laws, the laws of God among our communities. We have had much sorrow. We're struggling. So in order, instead of praying to the most high God, you rather go to the white man. You rather go to your oppressor. Read. So this device pleased them well. So this plan pleased them well. That's why they are broadcasting on national television. Read. Jump down to the then, 16. You know? But, yeah, yeah, no, no. Verse 13, verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then certain of the people were so, were so forward therein. They were chacharach. Read. That they went to the king. They went to the so-called white men, or rather they supported or they leaned upon the policy that the white men gave unto them. Go ahead. That they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. That's why they are saying now, the Department of Health Services is not supporting them. But the, the, the Choice on Termination of Pregnancy Act is right there written in black and white, but they don't support it. In practice, they don't support it, but in theory, they do. Because a lot of the, the men in the parliament, you understand, those are still traditional men. They're still dealing with thou shalt not commit abortion, meaning thou shalt not kill. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 15. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant. They made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant because they didn't physically make themselves uncircumcised. Although some of them did, Dr. Aiden Klang, Professor Aiden Klang, he got, he got a vasectomy. He made himself uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant, meaning to hell with God's laws. Go ahead. And joined themselves to the heathen mm -hmm. and were sold to mischief. You see that thing? They joined themselves to the so-called white men and were sold to do mischief. What is the mischief? The mischief is the killing of our sons and daughters they are hiding behind what? They are hiding behind the law or the act that says they terminate the choice on termination of pregnancy act of 1996. They hide behind it. You see that thing? They were sold to do mischief. They assimilated into Greek culture. That's what's going on now. So these two, this the Erimu Fukeng, I mean Erim Sana and um, they hate their own people. And guess what? They joined themselves to the heathen and they were sold to do mischief. That's why it says, shall the throne of iniquity and fellowship with thee with frameth mischief by a law. That's why it says they were sold to do, they were sold to do mischief. That's what you are seeing right there. I want you men to understand what's going on here. Give me Psalms almost 6 verse 34. You know what? Before you get there, before you get there, let's go back. Go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah 53, 57, verse 3. Isaiah 57, verse 3. Read that for me. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 3. Come on. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorcerers, mm -hmm. the seed of the adulterer and the whore. That's who Edim Shanga, that's them. The sorcerers, the sons, they are sons of the sorcerers because sorcery is witchcraft. What is the witchcraft? Sacrificing of sons and daughters to Molech, okay? Which is abortion. The seed of the adulterer and the whore. The most High God is telling you what their, their parents are like. Go ahead. Against whom do you sport yourselves? Meaning they sport themselves after the customs of the heathen. Read on. Against whom make ye a wide mouth mm -hmm. 
and draw out the tongue. Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? They are children of transgression and seed of falsehood, meaning lies. Go ahead. Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree. They inflame themselves with idols under every green tree because they say he's a full-blown born-again Christian who support abortion. You can't make this up. Read on. Slaying the children in the veins under the cliffs of the rocks. You see that thing? Killing the children through abortion. Read. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. Mm -hmm. The smooth stones of the stream of blood is their portion because they killed our sons and daughters through abortion and they what? It says, among the smooth stones of the stream, the stream of blood of our sons and daughters, that's their portion. Read on. They, they are thy Lord. That's their Lord, read. Even to them has thou poured a drink offering. Mm -hmm. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? You see what the Lord is asking. Should I receive comfort in this when you perform sacrifices to Molech? Read. Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Because they worship idols. That's the lofty and high mountain. Idolatry. Read. Even Tether wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. They offer sacrifices to Molech. Abortion. Read. Behind the doors also and the pots hast thou set up thy remembrance. You see that thing? It says, behind the doors also, and the post has thou set up their remembrance. Because what? They've got Maristo. They've got, um, they, they've got different institutions that support the killing of our sons and daughters. That's what this is going into. Come on. For thou hast discovered thyself to another than me. I mean, you see that they discovered themselves to another God than the Heavenly Father. Read. And art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy pay. They've enlarged their bed because guess what? They are, they, they are growing the business because they go to different um, news, 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 uh, newsrooms to, in order for them to spread this wicked demonic message, evil communications to our sons, I mean, to our daughters that actually what? That they, to our daughters that want to commit abortion. So they are enablers. So Dr. Professor Elim Khan and Kalim Mufuge, these are two enablers. They are enabling the killing of our sons and daughters. Read. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Mm -hmm. Thou hast their bed where thou sowest it. Go ahead. And thou wentest to the king with ointment and didst increase thy perfumes and didst send thy messengers far off and didst debase thyself even unto hell. They've debased themselves even unto hell. Meaning what? Death and destruction of our sons and our daughters through abortion, sacrificing to the idol Molech. That's why it says they increase their perfumes. I guess perfume is something that smells good. It attracts. They lure you in. They lure our, our daughters to come and commit abortion. And this send their, their messengers. Meaning what? They send our, they send um, people that to go there to speak to the people in the community to say, listen, um, Go to the clinic or no, you're struggling, you're pregnant, don't worry. This is the, this is the, there's a better way. Here's the pill. Here's the contact details. You want to kill the baby? Don't worry. We got you. We're going to help you. We'll take care of you. That's their messenger. It's as far off and this debase themselves unto hell. They debase themselves to do what? To hell. Meaning to the killing of our sons and daughters. Meaning what? They are helping to afford the affliction. In case you don't understand what this means. What well, that's why it says, thou, and this debase thyself even unto hell. They are helping to afford the affliction like we read in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14. That's what they be doing. Okay, now watch this. Get that in Psalm 106. Psalm 106, read verse 34. Psalm chapter 106, verse 34. Come on. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. Because the Lord commanded us to destroy this nation. Read. But we mingled among the heathen and learned their works. We mingled our, um, ourselves among these other nations. We started to learn their works, to worship their idols. Read. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Now that, that goes into the killing of our sons and daughters. Sacrificing sons and daughters to Molech. Read. 
Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. You see that part right there? Read that verse again. Psalms chapter 106, verse 37. Read. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. They sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. Which devil is this? Molech. Read. And shed innocent blood. They shed innocent blood. Come on. Even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, mm -hmm. whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. You see that thing? Whom they say, they, he says, they shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. That's Molech. What we're reading in Leviticus 20. Come on. And the land was polluted with blood. Right now, the land is polluted with the blood of our sons and daughters because they sacrificed to Canaanite God. Read. Thus were they defiled with their own works and mm -hmm. went a whoring with their own inventions. They went a whoring with their own inventions. That's why now they are coming up with ways to easily kill our sons and daughters through these abortions. That's what these black men and black women are doing. Especially these ones, by analogy degree, if they are medical doctors, they are the ones that you must really watch out for. Because many of them, they, 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 are not for the, they are not for the support and the building up of our nation. They are for the destruction of our nation because they support white supremacy. Those degrees that they've got is to support white supremacy. I hope you men and women understand that thing. I need this thing to hit home. I need you to understand this thing. Go back to Ezekiel now. Before we go back to Ezekiel, let's go back to the article because I have not forgotten. Now, read that part again when it says, um, if she's more than what? Read that. If she's more than 20 weeks pregnant, she can get the abortion only if her or the fetus's life is in danger or they are likely to be serious birth defects. So the it's not a fetus, that's a life. That's why in Exodus 21, 22, 23, it says, thou shalt give life for life because that's a life in there. It's not a fetus. Okay, come on, read on. A woman under the age of 18 will be advised to consult her parents. Mm -hmm. But she can decide not to inform or consult them if she so chooses. So now they are advocating that the children must not honor their fathers and mothers. They must just ignore them. When they get to the hospital, these nurses, these would Dr. Kalemu Fugen, who Edim Shanga, they're supposed to be parents to these kids. But instead, they say, no, don't worry, we're going to kill that baby for you. Keep going. A woman who is married or in a life partner relationship will be advised to consult her partner. Mm -hmm. But she can decide not to inform or consult him or her. This is crazy. This is evil as hell. A married woman. She can, she, a married woman with her husband, she's pregnant, the baby is growing in her stomach. She can just decide one day, say, you know what, I don't want this baby, I don't, I don't even have to talk to my husband because the government says I can do it. Then she goes, she kills the baby, she comes home, and the husband says, so what happened? How come, what's going on? No, I had an abortion. So which man is going to be okay with that? Which man is going to be okay with that? This is crazy, man. Go ahead. An exception is that if the woman is severely mentally ill or has been unconscious for a long time, where consent of a life partner, parent, or legal guardian is required. You see that thing? So they just throw these things in there. They don't give a damn about that. There is not, they don't have to get consent. The only consent they are looking for is the consent from the black woman who goes to the clinic because she go in there with the intent to kill. That's the only concern they want. That's the only concern they are looking for. So I need you men and women to understand what's going on. We are at war. That's what I keep telling you. We are at war. You understand? For the minds of us, our, of our people. Understand that thing. Go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 23, read verse 43 now. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 43. Come on. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries, will they now commit whoredoms with her and she with them? You see that thing? The one that is old in adultery, it goes back, it goes into the women that commit 
that commit these abortions because they are in the midst of adultery. Not only that, they are in the midst of idolatry. She now she's old in adultery. She's an old whore. Go ahead. Yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that plays the harlot. Mm -hmm. So when they in unto Ahola and unto Aholaba, the lewd women. With the lewd woman. It says Ahola and Aholaba, the lewd women. Meaning these women, again, they come together. They are enablers. They don't correct each other. They encourage each other to kill their kids. Read. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses and after the manner of women that shed blood. Wait. Because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. You see what the Bible is calling them? The Bible is not saying, telling you, the Bible is letting you know that because they keep saying, no, what if she's poor? What if she's this? What if she's that? The most that God is telling you the reason why they do this. They do this because of idolatry and adultery. That's why they kill our sons and daughters. It's got nothing to do with poverty. It's got nothing to do with money. Jump up to verse 37 again. Because the most that God is telling you why they commit abortion. Poverty has nothing to do with it. Read verse 37 again. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 37. Come on. That they have committed adultery. Mm -hmm. And blood is in their hands. Right. And with their idols have they committed adultery. And have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire to devour them. With the most help, you see what the God is telling you? The most help God is letting you know the reason why they commit these abortions is got nothing to do with poverty, but it's got everything to do with idolatry and adultery. That's it. Israel likes to throw things in there and the black woman will just repeat the same stuff. The wicked black men will repeat the same stuff. No, it's because of poverty. <clears throat> Is because of idolatry and adultery. That's why they kill our sons and our daughters. Now jump down to verse 45 again. Verse 45. Wait. And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the men of adulteresses and after the men of women that shed blood. The righteous men is as we shall judge them after the men of, of adulteresses, meaning wicked women that go out there to the clinics to kill our sons and our daughters. Right? Because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. No, because they are poor. Because they are adulteresses. Because they are adulteresses. Because they are adulteresses. Because they are adulteresses. But failure. It's not because they don't have money. It's not because they are poor. No, it's because they are adulteresses. That's what God is telling you. Okay? Jump down to verse 48. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 48. Thus will I cause lewdness to cease out of the land, mm -hmm. that all women may be taught not to do after your lewdness. Because now our job, the prophets, will go out to teach other women not to follow that wicked example of these women that kill our sons and our daughters. Right? And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall bear the sins of your idols. Okay, come on. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because the most that God will judge them if they don't attend. Ezekiel 16, read verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 20. Come on. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? You see what? Listen to what the Lord is asking. He is asking, he said, listen, you've sacrificed the... You've taken your sons, your sons and your daughters, whom thou hast born unto me. Because these children don't belong to them. The children belong to the most high God. Is as this has thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured by Molech. Is this of thy whoredom a small matter? This is because of whoredom. It's got nothing to do with poverty. Read. Right? That thou hast slain my children and delivered mm -hmm. them to cause them to pass through the fire for them. You see that thing? Thou hast slain my children. These kids are not there. These kids belong to the most high God. Read. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. Stop right there. He says, in, in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. 
They don't remember that they used to be small. They used to be in their mother's womb. Their mother didn't kill them, but they've forgotten that. They've forgotten. That's why they are pushing for this demonic stuff. This is all demonic. Okay, come on. When thou was naked and bare and was polluted in thy blood. You see what the Bible, the most that God is, is reminding them is that listen, you forgetting that you used to be in your mother's womb, polluted in blood. Your mother didn't kill you. You forgetting the days of your youth. How come now you don't you don't feel for the child that you're about to kill when you yourself you're in the same situation? And guess what? Your mother didn't kill you. So who your mother didn't kill you? Why now do you think it's okay for you to kill this child that is polluted in blood in their mother's womb? This is sickening. Go ahead. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness. Mm -hmm. Woe, woe unto thee, says the Lord God. That's the same thing we must say. Woe, woe, woe unto thee, you black, lewd women. Read. That thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place mm -hmm. and has made thee an high place in every street. This eminent place that they built is these abortion places. They call them legal abortion stations where black women can come in rural, from rural areas to come and commit abortion, to kill their sons and daughters. So they are providing these facilities for them to come and do it. That's the eminent place. Let me show you the eminent place that they provide. Because this woman is part of this organization also. Yes, she's been given a job at the UN. They rewarded her for this demonic stuff that she's been doing. This, what you see here, is a website that this woman is a part of, okay? So we're gonna go to it. I'm just gonna touch on it a little bit. Read that. Reading from srjc.org.za about us. Mm -hmm. We are the Sexual Reproductive Justice Coalition. The Sexual Reproductive Justice Coalition. This woman, Dr. Kale Mufuge, she was part of this. She was once part of this organization. You understand? So this is the eminent place where they are give, create a platform for the black women to come and kill their sons and their daughters. Now read that. Who are we? Mm -hmm. We are the SRJC. SRJC stands for Sexual Reproductive Justice Coalition, a virtual organization that has been in existence since 2015 when the need for a fresh and new narrative was growing in South Africa. This fresh and new narrative is to create a virtual platform for black women to just phone and kill their babies through the pills that they take. Go ahead. A virtual organization that was founded pre-pandemic times, revolutionary. You see that thing? Pre-pandemic times meaning what? Before this corona hit, it was it was it is a virtual it was a virtual platform that was created pre-pandemic times. That means that now that we are in the pandemic. It's going to be easy for the business to operate, to create an environment for our sisters to kill their sons and their daughters. Let's read the mission. Mission. To provide a platform through which individuals and organizations produce and use evidence to foster informed public debate and consensus building. Working towards holding policymakers and implementers accountable for progress towards realizing sexual and reproductive justice for all. Sexual and reproductive justice for all. Sexual freedom, my body, my choice. That's the mission. So they are liberal, these are liberals. They hate men, they hate life. But they love to do what? They love to commit adultery and idolatry, hence the killing. Understand that? So you see, they also support decriminalization of sex work. You see that thing? Youth also, youth, sexual, sexual rights and health, uh, sexual reproductive and health rights, something like that for the youth. I'm going to do the class next regarding the, regarding teenage pregnancy, because this is a preponent for teenage pregnancy, okay? Because these teenagers, they are learning from these demons right here. These are demons, okay? Now, go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 16, uh, read verse 25 now, come on. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 25. Come on. Thou hast built thy high places at every head of the way mm -hmm. and has made thy beauty to be abhorred. Come on. 
and has opened thy feet to everyone that pass by and multiplied thy whoredoms. So they've opened their feet and it says they've opened their feet to everyone that passes by, meaning every woman that comes to want to commit abortions to kill their babies and they multiply their whoredoms because now, because they've opened organization and institution for women to come and kill their kids, guess what? They are multiplying whoredoms in the land because they are encouraging whoredom now. They are encouraging adultery. They are encouraging idolatry. They are encouraging murder. You see that thing? Read on. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors. Because guess what? Because they are worshipping their idols. Read. Great of flesh. Mm -hmm. And hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. So you see that thing? It's got nothing to do with poverty, but everything to do with whoredom. Jump down to verse 28. Come on. Verse 28, thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. That's why, that's why in Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 22, he says, this was not enough for them. So they wanted to take it a step further. That's what black people do. Read verse 30 now. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 30. Mm -hmm. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God? He says, how weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God. These women that commit these abortions and these black women that support and create, they say, you know, we are abortion providers. They are, their mind is weak. They hide behind their degrees, but their God says their mind is weak. These are weak women. These are weak men that support these abortions. Read. How weak is thine heart, saith the Lord God, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. The work of an imperious, whorish woman. You know what that means? The daughters of Zion are haughty. Haughty means imperious. You think you're all there because now you think you are, you are a god. Like you know, men worship you. They have sex with you. Now you think you are a god. That's why you are able to kill you playing god. That's why it says the work of an imperious Polish woman. Read on. In that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, mm -hmm. and makest thine high place in every street, and has not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. Now you see that thing? That what they are doing is they are opening doors for our sisters to commit adultery. Because they say, don't worry, if you fall pregnant, we're gonna give, we're gonna kill that baby. So don't worry. So kill the baby, you can go back and hold yourself out again. Read. But as a wife that committed adultery, which taketh strangers instead of a husband. You see that thing? And many of these women are not married people. Go ahead. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, mm. and hirest them that they may come unto thee on every side for thy hoarder. So now, basically, these eminent places, like your, uh, this website that we're looking at, when it says Sexual Reproductive Justice Coalition, these are whole houses. These are whole houses and slaughterhouses. They commit whoredom and they commit murder. So they're creating actually whole places for women to come and kill their kids. That's what Ezekiel is explaining here. Read verse 35 now. Come on. Verse 35, mm -hmm. wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out. Because, because thy filthiness was poured out. What is the filthiness? Committing abortion, killing our sons and our daughters, committing adultery, committing idolatry. Right? Because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers. Because of thy Filthiness was poured out. Because, the, because thy filthiness was poured out. Not because of poverty, not because of the filthiness of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, which is committing adultery. Okay, go ahead. Because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers. You see that thing? Thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers. Not thy poverty, not thy nakedness. Because they are playing the whore. Read. And with all the idols of thy abominations. And by the blood of thy children, 
which thou didst give unto them. You see that thing? So they commit adultery. You understand? They commit idolatry. They commit adultery. And what do they do? They commit murder. That's why he says, and with all the idols of thy abomination and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. So they commit ad adultery, idolatry, and murder. Idolatry, adultery, and murder. Because they murder the kids, they sacrifice their sons and daughters to more The Bible is a true book. And that's what we are seeing in our community. Because our people don't want this to come out. Especially the black women and weak men. What we're bringing out, they don't want this stuff to come out. Understand that we're going to bring this thing out. I'm going to show you our foremothers in the past, the mindset of our foremothers, because when you see the black women today, they don't have the mindset of our foremothers back then. Give me Exodus chapter 1, verse 15. Let me show you our foremothers that were about, that was pro life. Our foremothers that were about the building of the nation. Let me show you where their mindset was at. Read that in Exodus chapter 1, Exodus 1, verse 15. This is when we were in Egypt, when there was a new king over Egypt that knew not Joseph. And they were, they were dealing with us with rigor. They were oppressing us with much wicked oppression. One of the things that they did, they attempted to do was this. Read that. Exodus 1 verse 15. Come on. I'm almost done. Exodus chapter 1 verse 15. Read. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other poor. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Stop right there. So remember, we are in spiritual Egypt right now. This was physical Egypt. Now we are in spiritual Egypt as slaves once again. But guess what? Our sisters back then, they had enough sense to say, wait a minute. Pharaoh is telling our, our foremothers to say, listen, when you, when you do the office of the midwife for the black women, the Israelite women, is that when, they sit, when, they, when you see them upon the stools, because they will sit upon stools and gravity will pull the baby out. You understand? There was no such thing as push, push. There was none of that. It says, if it be a son, then he shall kill him. So I can bet you that many of the abortions that are committed, if they are killing the mainly the black, the, 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 the son. They are killing the son, most important. That's what they're doing. They know that if it's a girl, if the girl falls pregnant, we'll just We'll just she'll just commit abortion anyway. But if it's a boy, kill him because the men they know that men they are the ones that they are, they are the ones that continue the what they continue the race. So if you kill the men, then that means there's no leader, and that's what you are seeing today in our community. You understand the gates there of language, right? But if it be a daughter, then she shall live because she just continues. She will just commit. She'll just be a whore. She'll fall pregnant. She'll kill the baby. Go ahead. But the midwives feared God mm -hmm. and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but Come saved on. the men children alive. These were righteous women right here. You see what the mindset of our sisters back then, of our mothers, is as listen. But the midwives, they feared the law and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. You sisters, this is the mindset you must have. You must have the mindset of Shifra. You must have the mindset of our former mother too. Go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Come on. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women. Because the Hebrew women, the Israelite women, they are not like the other, the women of the other nations. But now because we, they mingle themselves among the hidden and learn their work, now they act like them. Go ahead. For they are lively mm -hmm. and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. It says they are lively because we were given lively oracles, the laws of God, to what? To preserve life, not to kill it. Read. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied and works very mighty. You see that thing because of what? Come on. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. 
You see that thing? The meat, because the meat wife, they feared God. Because of what they did is that we as a people, we multiplied and we begged very mighty. The nations get to multiply. But guess what? Um, this what, what this is showing you is what? Abortion is population control. I hope you understand it. Abortion is population control because they are killing our sons and our daughters, especially the sons. Because they don't want us to increase. They are, that's how they are dealing wisely with us. I hope you men can see that. I hope you sisters can see that well, this is how they dealt. They dealt wisely with us back then during the time of Egypt. They are dealing wisely with us today. And they are using our own people to do what? To kill our sons and our daughters that we don't multiply in the land. I hope you men understand that. Especially you sisters. Okay? You must follow the footsteps of, our former, of your former because they were against abortion. You also must have the same mindset this day. I hope you understand this thing. I'm going to end the class right here. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye to show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.